that. Oh, actually, I may have to hit daily twice. Let's see. All right. It is time for the all boss daily run. And anytime you load into the daily run, make sure that you're on the correct daily. So the way you do that is when you click daily run, you pause, hit new game and see, look, it, I click daily, but it still didn't send us into the appropriate, you know, the, the correct daily for today. So you hit daily run again, hit yes. You, it may take uh, doing this uh, one or two times before it actually loads you into the correct daily. It's yeah, noise is weird like that. There we go. We know we're on the correct daily for today. And it is the, uh, what is this, June 16th. So everybody that does the run today should get this exact seed. And you'll even see at the bottom it says daily run and then the seed number. Uh, all right. Uh, kind of a crappy start, actually. Kind, kind of a yikes. So let's go ahead and pour this out. Uh, the plan for today's run, though, is to kill all the bosses, uh, all 12 bosses in Noita. I don't plan to go to a parallel world, but I won't rule it out. I may end up going to a parallel world if I feel like uh, I'm a little nervous. I feel like I'm lacking in resources or whatever. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, to start off, I'm going to empty out the lava so that we can get some water and we can get prepared for a, a long run. But remember, if I die in this run, uh, I'll still be throwing it up on YouTube to show people. I'm spitting on myself over here. To show people that, um, you know, not every run is perfect. Not every run is flawless. Um, look at this. Getting some water right off the bat. Give me a bit of that water. Remember, this, like I always say, the starter quest to the beginning of a run, get water. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. There's a levitation in there. I don't need the levitadium. Uh, if you die in this run, uh, do you die in real life? Yes. I, I have hooked up uh, Noita directly to my heart. Seemed like a good idea at the time. In before Chase passes several easy boss killers and goes uh, to the parallel world. Never, Latali. Never. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, at each uh, boss fight, I'll probably kind of pause at the boss fight for a moment and see if there's any tips that the chat would have for these bosses because uh, just going off the top of my head, it's hard to cover everything, right? It's hard to think of every possible piece of advice. And not that we'll be able to give every piece of advice, but I do think it's important to cover like main things. So if you uh, see me at a boss kind of stalling for a moment and asking chat, you know, what kind of advice they would have for the people out there on YouTube, feel free to throw out your suggestions. Uh, I want to open that, but I don't want to get in the water and open it because that shit could get me killed. All right, not cool, man, not cool. There we go. Right. Whoop. That is polymorphine. So we can use the polymorphine to exit the first holy mountain if we need to. I'll grab it, but I don't plan to use it. Hopefully we'll find something else. There we go. We can exit the first holy mountain without collapsing it now. Already have a way out. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and grab that first orb. Uh, the spitter bolt and the unstable crystal are are not ways to get the first orb. Like both of them do not work. That's the reason I entered the mines without grabbing the first orb. However, now we have glitter bombs, so glitter bombs do allow us to get the uh, the orb. I mean, you could use an unstable crystal, but you'd have to be doing some really jank stuff. <laughs> Panther, I will not accidentally t uh, teleport into Tiny's mouth. All right. I will kill Tiny on this run. You'll see. You'll all see. Yeah, I should have grabbed that levitadium to make it a little easier on myself, shouldn't I? Would have been the smart thing to do. Hilarious, Duke. Hilarious. You gotta plug your Twitch for the YouTube viewers. It's in the des description below, Ninja. Good thing you brought it up. Uh, all right. Almost there, I think. Come on. Aw, oh, that bounced off of it. So if you're curious, I'm kind of dodging the sparkles and stuff as they come down because I'm nervous of them igniting me. Uh, so I could go turn in this tablet for a little bit of gold if I'd like to up on, up on that, but uh, I'm feeling lazy.
Alrighty. We got some light. We got some rocks. This wand is pretty crap, though, because 10 mana regen. This wand's also pretty crap with 20 mana regen, but whatever. So far, nothing too special. At least we got a way to, to do some really, really basic digging with Glitter Bomb, which is, you know, something. Are we doing the pit boss trick? I don't plan to, just because I, I, the, most people I think know the pit boss trick. If anybody's curious what uh, Stoner is referring to, uh, there's actually a really good video done by Fury Forged uh, on how to kill the very first, uh, well not the first boss, but the, the first boss you could you could run to in the game. The the closest boss to the player that's uh, whenever you start out, and that's to the right. Uh, you have to go across this lava over here to the right. And then uh, over a bridge, and there is the bridge boss, which some people refer to as Squidward. And uh, you'll, uh, yeah, you can use a tablet, and you can prop it up in such a way that it'll protect you from the boss, and the boss will pretty much uh, just sit there and kind of idle and kill himself. Uh, but yeah, I will not be using that method. I'll try to use a, you know, a regular method to kill him. But if you are looking for that, uh, just feel free to, to, to YouTube. Uh, what, what, sh what should they YouTube chat to be able to find uh, Fury's video? What's the title of it? I can't remember what he titled that video, but it covers pretty much everything you need to know. Uh, with that said, though, I still don't have it down to a perfect science. Last time, I haven't tried to do it in a couple weeks. The last time we did it, we failed a couple times, so I gotta I gotta revisit that so I can try to get to like a hundred percent success rate. You know, we got a heart and we got a flash thrower. That's what you like to see. Okay, I'm hoping he would he would go away. Hold on, I'm gonna wait. The reason I'm trying to wait is I, I want to make use of this flash thrower. An early flash thrower is uh, decently rare, not like ultra rare, but decently rare, and I'd like to get the value out of them if I can. Don't tell users to click away from your video. Hey, the intention is for them to learn as much as possible. If that if they're wanting to learn the bridge boss trick, I I, I will gladly point them in the direct direction they need to go. I just wish I knew the exact title of it. I should have looked it up before I started, but you, as long as you just start looking that stuff up, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you'll come across it. Bridge boss, trick, something like that. Uh, hello? Please die. Uh, we can kill this guy with the tablet, I guess. So this guy's scary because he bleeds a ton of acid, and I'm trying to, uh, oh shit, not be too close to him whenever he bursts. A dunks viewer engagement drops to zero. I think it's pretty common knowledge, though, these days. I mean... Uh, most people know the the trick. Uh, not only that, but it's one of those where I I feel like it's it's very hard to make that be a hundred percent. I don't even know if it's possible to make the the boss kill a hundred percent because of the fact that it can have the enemy spawn on the surface, which will you know affect how the boss moves and stuff. And uh, I, and I don't like to recommend a strategy that uh, could just screw them out of bad luck. So that's. That's a key reason to, to not show it at this moment. I'm trying to do it in a way where I can guarantee success this run. So I'll try to kill every boss with methods that I know are tried and true. I mean, killing Steve isn't 100%. That's true, but also not, not killing Steve with the statue is also not a death sentence either. Uh, not killing the bridge boss uh, that you just spawned in whenever you have the starter wands is a death sentence pretty much. Pick the gold ball. We could pick up the gold orb, I guess, if we if we need that. The orb. Uh, all right. So here's what we're gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to create like a hole in this, and see if we can drop down the flask thrower down here. If you can drop down the flask thrower into one of these holy mountains, it's pretty nice because it makes it easier to to catch these flasks that he throws. You need some room. Ding. Fury's video is called How to Defeat the Wand Connoisseur and Get OP Early Anoita. Thank you, No Lava, for looking that up, man. So there you go. There's the exact title. Uh, it should give you the general strat. Uh, okay, our little friend hatched out of an egg. Come on, man. We're getting there. This is kind of a, a very conservative strategy. We could just fly to it, like, from above. Okay. 
Please, game. Is there an invisible edge right here? What is it? Oh, yeah, there is an invisible edge right there. I wasn't even paying attention. Hey, we got it. <laughs> Blind. <laughs> it's so dark, I can't see that spot. Here we go. Now we gotta seduce this guy. Come on over here. And see, those flash that he throws can be very dangerous. Uh, oop, we took our first damage right here. There he goes. And now we are needing him to hopefully kill these guys off. Did he kill himself? No! Yeah, so that's that egg that was originally there. I was kind of debating if I should pick it up, but I thought, eh, they'll probably die pretty fast. Well, all that hard work just for those. That's Noita, though. Every little thing will find a way to kind of screw you over. Had I... Had I not played it, uh, had I played it extra, extra, extra conservative, picked up the egg just to make sure that those guys couldn't hatch and somehow be a distraction, then I would have had a flash thrower. And that guy's, you, you may not think it's a big deal, but I mean, having that, that, that flash thrower throw me a tele flask just makes the run even more certain of being a, an early win, you know? So it was just a misplay. You gotta remember next time, don't trust the egg. It will find a way to kill the flash thrower. Doot, 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 doot. Yeah, he died to acid. Yeah, but he was throwing it at the the minions. Not he he died to the he died to acid that he was throwing at the minions, which killed him. Usually, you want him throwing the flask at you so that you can catch the dangerous ones and move them to the side, so he doesn't kill himself. <laughs> Jesus Almighty, we'll see. We'll see. I'll can I'm I'll consider it. I'll consider... What is that right there? An Ambrosia? Hmm. Be careful whenever you see a flask right here and you're trying to grab it because minions will leap towards you and they can knock that flask over. Okay, well, we're just going to kill this guy. Ow, that was kind of dangerous. Could have blown up in my face. What the heck? I... What is he doing? Oh, I guess the route isn't large enough because of that. All right, let's throw these crystals for him. Hello? Mm -hmm. It's the only really good thing about the unstable crystals is they make it kind of, kind of nice to kill off things like that. Though the missiles are also pretty good. Blau says, remember to tell your YouTube viewers to smash that like, but like button and subscribe for more. Leave a friendly comment and ring your little bell to be notified when you upload a video. Blau's, he, he's got it down. He's teaching me the ways. Though I think you gotta be more original these days, right? Whenever you're saying to smash the like button, don't, don't people have like their own catchphrases pretty much? You gotta slurp that like button. You gotta sweat on that like button. Hmm. Get over here. Dunk, yeah, dunk that like button. There you go. Kodiak knows what's up. Uh, okay, what the fuck? Destroy the button with the, the power of a thousand suns? I think that one will grab their attention there, Cluncho. That's a good one. Alright, Miksu's now just trolling. This this guy. This guy. Uh, and we, we are doing a thorough search of the first zone because, I mean, we're planning to do an all-boss run. So every heart can, can pretty much save the run. 25 HP can be a deal-breaker. <laughs> Come on, hearts. Where are you? Ooh, a chest. All right. Okay, a little bit of gold. <laughs> Dunk or slam that like button. My name was made for this. It was made for the clickbaity. I don't know the right word for that. <laughs> the the setup to to grow on YouTube. Yes. 
dunk or slam it. I have no idea how long this video is going to be, by the way. Um, the last time we did the SunQuest video, it was like seven hours. And uh, still, I get people to this day that will post a, a comment. There was one just like two days ago or something that was like, I watched this whole video start to finish in one sitting. Like, you know, stuff like that. I'm like, damn. They just load up the YouTube video, I guess, and, you know, like they're going to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy in one sitting. They're like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. All right. So that gold orb right there, we could use it to, to get some extra gold if we needed, but gold is usually not something I'm too worried about in runs like this. Two times speed helps with long videos like that. Yeah, especially in something like Noita. Uh, maybe you could slow it down at certain points where you're actually hearing something that you're interested in. But there are a lot of moments that are just... Like right now, I'm kind of just... It's like watching a rat in a maze trying to find his way out. And so it, it takes a bit. Now, obviously, you could just go down and move on to the next level if you wanted to. But I'm trying to guarantee success on this run. And because of that, it requires me... Soaking up every last resource I can get out of this damn level. <laughs> what, demon? Are you alright there? Uh, Dumpster says, I'm using your Sun uh, Quest video to help me uh, get the Sun Quest done once I uh, get past the initial world survival without uh, dumb stuff. Yeah, the there's a lot of steps to that Sun Quest, which is why I, I did that video first before doing the all boss one. I think the all boss one probably isn't as useful to a lot of people. I mean, there's maybe a boss or two that they don't know specific mechanics about them. But, like, the Sun Quest is just, like, a series of, like, just a ton of stuff you need to know. Like, hey, know this, know this, know this. It's stuff that you wouldn't know naturally. But the bosses are, like, you know, some some of them you can figure out on your own. Sun Quest, you're never going to figure that out on your own unless you're just crazy. Uh, Alright, let's burn that whole thing away. While we're doing that, let's pour some water on this guy because he's holding the wand and it's freaking me out. We pee on him through the ground. What we're doing is essentially shoving water through the ground onto him. And this water, okay, we need him to, okay, there it goes. He's very spastic, this guy. Whoa. Hello? There we go. Well, I thought we had a good amount of water on him. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> he, he's usually not this jumpy. He usually idles around a bit more. I guess it's because maybe I'm, I'm close enough that it's aggroing his... Uh, there he goes. Pfft. Well, for some reason, once right, I walked away, he's, he just dies. Right he is drenched in sweat. Yo! Dex, thank you for the 31 monther. Says hi. Uh, laugh my ass off. You're old. Hey, you're old man. Wait. Oh, how are you, old man? <laughs> they said, hey, you're old man. <laughs> uh, I'm doing good, Dex. I'm doing good. Um, nothing too crazy going on in my world. I hope you're doing well as well, there, Dex. Having a fantastic. Is it Thursday yet? Uh, yeah, it's officially Thursday here in Texas. Hey, you. Hey, you. I finally got my butt in gear and started pr uh, producing uh, for my YouTube again, and I want to tell Chase all about it, but I got to wait till this run is over. Oh, shit. You got a ways to go there, Blau. You got a ways to go, but I hope you've been enjoying it. I saw you I tweet about something with, like, Gendarme, right? You had made a video with, with Gendarme, I believe. I think is where I saw it on YouTube. Could be wrong. Could be going crazy. Beep. Alright, just farming gold. So we're over here on the left side now, which is uh, means we're getting into Collapse Mines territory. Which, uh, once you move over to Collapse Mines territory, you need to like go into to Hawkeye mode, where you're looking for frogs. Because that's one of the main ways this run could end. Would be accidentally coming across a frog that one-shots you. Mm. Miksu, don't even question it. Oh, come on. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Vial, when we come across it, that's when we'll find out. Oh, come on. Come on. So, not doing great. 63 HP. In a regular run, this, I mean, this would be fine. Like, I'd be, I'd be happy with this, but... For uh, an all-boss run, I was hoping to take as little damage as possible so I can play really greedy in the next zone. We'll just have to wait and see. Berserkium. That guy. Whoa! Kind of scary. You're getting married in 10 days there, Dex? For real? Hey, that's freaking awesome. What the heck? Congratulations. I do have light right here, but uh, I'm wanting to set this up so that maybe we, we can return and get a heart out of there in a bit. All right, that was annoying. Exciting, dude, that is exciting. In days? Oh my goodness. That there. Hmm. So we'll um We'll return to this later, I think. I mean, it doesn't hurt if you get the water draining a little bit. That that just helps for later. If I don't oh I, well kind of. I'm having a hard time. I, I want that spot right there to get hit. I don't know how I can get it though. Without just like swimming around in that area and almost dying. So there's so much water in here. This area is completely flooded. We have some light right here. That uh, means that I, I know that later we'll be able to, you know, deal with that. But attaching light to a rock could make this... Actually, hmm. I wonder if somebody would could like kick this oh, along really in such a way. See this guy right now. He is in sweat. Use it like a lantern. That could be kind of hilarious. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna go through that trouble though. Uh, Phoenix with a six monther says, "Give the weebs freedom, freedom of speech." <laughs> no bad weebs. Must silence the weebs. Oh yeah, telly kick. That's not a bad idea. P4. You could use Tele Kick, pick that up, and use it like it's a lantern. It's a cool idea. Uh, anyways, we pretty much cleared this first zone. Uh, I would like the 25 HP out of that, but uh, we'll we'll come back to it anyways later. I think shouldn't be a big deal. Is there anything else? I'm sure, I missed probably something in this area, but let's just hope it's not a heart. Hmm. Yeah, let's. Let's move on. Let's go. In fact, uh, I won't even be closing the bets until the second Holy Mountain. We're just going to go ahead and do it that way. Since today is likely to be a longer run. Ooh, Chain Bolt. First Mountain. Not bad. Explosion Immunity. Hmm. <laughs> These are all three good perks, though, actually. All three pretty awesome, but uh, Explosion Immunity is the one that will keep us the safest. Uh, however, I mean, I would have liked Item Radar. I would have liked Healthy Exploration. Man, what a, what a good first Holy Mountain. Too bad uh, Explosion Immunity is the way to go. Well, just says Explosion Immunity is massive. Yeah, you, you just it's number one, baby. Top of the boards. Uh, by the way, how's it going, Waja? I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, hmm. We really need a lot of stuff here. I said I was going to close the second Holy Mountain, to be out. Um. I guess I'll... Oh, that's so terrible. So terrible. Let's do this. Just for now, we'll fill up our water. <laughs> P4 dropping off a thousand sweat. 
Come back once you have lottery. Now that would be extra greedy there, control freak. Going in, getting perk lottery, coming back to the first mountain. But if it worked out, that'd be kind of hilarious. Uh, Alright, so what I want to do is I want to set up a spot. Hopefully a safe zone here to uh, poly whenever I need to. There we go, a little bit of poly there. So we poly ourselves and we fly past the mountain collapse zone as a sheep. But I do not want to fall out there as a sheep because that would be dangerous. If you fall out here and there was an enemy and it just shoots me once and I die. What's up, mini kitty? Woo. So I have not grabbed the heal yet, as I'm sure many of you have noticed. Uh, we are playing this greedy. We want to see if we can get as much health as possible before... There's a heart right there. So see, right now I have 150. I grab this. One se oops. 175. So now if I was to grab the heal, I would have extra health for exploring this uh, early zone. That's the reason I'm doing this. So as much early health as I can get, that's what I'm going to try for. TK is saying that on this daily run that she did, she found a lot of a lot of hearts in it. So I'm 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 hype. Hopefully I snag a couple of these bad boys before I need to heal up. Oh my goodness. That is super dangerous. And it sucks because the the guy that grabbed it, of course, was a flask thrower. Somebody that we could benefit from farming a heli flask from. How annoying. Hmm. How are we going to do this? Ah, uh, that's not going to take us anywhere. I think that just takes us to the other end of that. Let's try to get through here. Your potion dude grabbed it too. Uh, also, uh, add mana somewhere lower right. Ooh, hell yeah. If I find this. Ah! Is that an explosive? I think that's an explosive right there. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Sucks because we don't have the greatest digging, so it's making things kind of annoying. Just trying to explore. Uh, weren't you immune to those? Yeah, I don't have to worry. Yeah, true. I don't have to worry about the big explosion, but I would have to worry about the uh, content. So if it's fire uh, or uh, toxic sludge, they still will. They'll take a bit of damage on us. But yeah, it wouldn't be like an insta death, which normally an explosion would be a near insta death with our low HP. Bombs for days. Come on, something to dig with. Ooh, Luminous Drill. That's Okay, I was thinking like Energy Orb, but it, <laughs> Luminous Drill is even better. You can definitely dig with that. There's a wand that I just passed, but let me finish checking this zone. Somebody has a wand over here. I have to be very careful. Oh, there. Oh, look at that. It's a big wand, too. The thick wand. Always cast homing. Look at all those mad. This is an interesting wand right here. Huh. Wow. We're gonna we're gonna grab that. I am interested. Shmamron says, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, the problem that the reason it's not necessarily like rigged levels of a good RNG is because it is a shuffle. But uh, still, pretty pretty cool wand because they always cast. Pretty cool. Yeah, if I get an unshuffler, then we will be in business. Unshuffler, I'll be like, oh yeah. Out of the way. Hmm. Imagine getting no more shuffle in the next holy mountain. I'll cross my fingers. Fingers crossed. Uh, nothing there. It should be a dead end down there. True, we could go like Latali saying, could go ball lightning on the homing, and just it'll 
It'll destroy. Problem is, though, the electricity will be kind of scary to use. Explosions are not so scary. Electricity, very scary. Oh, baby. Oh, my God. The rumors were true about an ad mana in the daily run. So, we already have a pretty damn good setup, don't we? Add mana, so luminous drill, luminous drill, luminous drill. No, she go add mana, luminous drill, luminous drill, double. Yeah. Well, well, rigged. Psh. You guys ask for it for an all boss run. I do an all boss run, and then you call rigged. What am I going to do with you, Chin? Bet's still on? Oh, yeah. I probably do need to close those bets soon, don't I? Hey, but it is an all-boss run. And in, 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 in an all-boss run, anything can happen. Still some scary variables there. Uh, we we'll go over here. You do an all boss run when you know where all the loot is? How would I know where all the loot is? I said the all boss run yesterday. <laughs> this is the daily run. I knew the future. Is that what you're saying? Solar's right. I do know the future. Uh, okay, so this one's going to be kind of annoying. We're going to fly with water. Then morph into a... Oh my god! <sighs> We're still fine. I, I got a little ambitious. <laughs> it's actually still fine though, uh, because because we have luminous drills, we can uh, we can make this still work. So it's not a big deal. I just have to wait on the curse to disperse, which are the red pixels. But anyways, what you're supposed to do there while we're waiting for the curse to disperse is you're I was using water to fly extra high, and then right here I was supposed to polymorph right at this moment and then fly over the edge like so. Instead, I poured and then I got I got too frisky and I ran early and collapsed the mountain. But the reason it's not a big deal, you'll see in a moment. Uh, we can still make our god wand and all that stuff. It's just gonna take uh, it's gonna take a second. So let's set up for this. Uh, we're gonna end up having to, to anger the gods with the method that I'm gonna do, though. If we had if we had a tele flask from one of those flask throwers, the uh, the teleportation flask, then this would be this would be a super easy, no no big deal. But instead, it's gonna take a moment because we have to dig very slowly. Mm. You can poly, then poly again as well. Yeah, I just didn't want to poly out in the level. I feel like it's a, it's, it makes me nervous. I like polying when I'm up in the safest zone possible. I hate polying out in the open. I feel like, you know, the moment you turn into a sheep or something, that's when an enemy out of nowhere for no reason comes roaming up like, oh, how's it going? You're like, wow, I've searched this whole zone. You are not there. The moment I turn into a sheep, you just spontaneously like just show up. Uh, Alright, so we grab the heal, and then now I need to focus on uh, making this wand OP. So real quickly, we're going to drop to the bottom. That was the reason I wanted to keep the mountain intact, was for editing purposes. Uh, but it's fine, we still have our second mountain. Uh, and I and because of what I'm going to do, we'll set it up in such a way... Oh my gosh, there was another heart. Well, give me that heart. Please, 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 please. Slowly. Bit of stabbing. <laughs> oh, it's an oh, it's a, it is a flash thrower. Uh, so we actually want to keep him in this thick water if we can, and of course he is. Uh, you know he's got other plans. No, no, no. All right, so in this water. It's kind of scary looking, I know. Okay, of course he's trapped himself. Hmm. We'll give it a moment. But uh, I think I can farm a Tele Flask off him. And he's in deep water like this, you can actually catch the flask he's throwing. You don't have to catch them, they just land in the water and they don't break, they don't shatter. don't have to do this, but I like to. I feel like it 
makes the run easier if you're able to be successful. Problem is, how do I get him out? That that, that rock is like stuck in him. Hmm. Drop a flat. Oh yeah, I do need to drop a flat so I can grab it. I guess I can get rid of Polly as well. They place down my Polly flask in the water. Don't do it. Hmm. Dad. We'll leave the flask over there. The fact that he's stuck with the rock in him makes me a little nervous. Um, okay, scoot that over. Move this. Move that. And if we had that like that, what is this? Pretty good. Uh, grab the oil material. Oh, I got close bets. I got close bets. I'll do that in one moment. Uh, if you're curious here, we're basically, uh, we built a luminous drill that will go constantly. Because this luminous drill is getting wrapped and put here. Just like this. So it's casting the add mana twice. And then I'm just slipping in a projectile in between it so that we have, uh, some damage. But, uh, pretty, pretty great start so far. Pretty great start. Let me close the bets real quick. Let's get back to the action. Um, so this wand can do both. It can dig and do damage. So it's like an all-in-one wand. And this opens up all the other spots uh, if for, for whatever we come across. Move it into the number one spot. Uh, these don't seem too exciting. Hmm. Trick blood money. It's a maybe. Trick blood money is one of those, if you're willing to take the time, you can keep yourself like full health all the time. We do have that one electricity wand. And we do have always cast homing rocks. That is true. Big brain chat, big brain. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with trick blood money. Uh, basically what that means is if we can kill stuff with these homing rocks, we should be able to farm blood money, which blood money is money that heals you. Blip, blip. So, uh, for now we'll put these two rocks there. On the always cast homing. Uh, statue, we're gonna set the statue up. Statue's being a little weird. Lay on its side. Alright, statue, lay on your side. Okay, that, okay, that was a little bit too strong of a kick. Get up there. Hold on, my legs are too too thick. Put light on the rock. I don't know if I want to add anything to potentially get more more lag going there. I don't know if the the light would add much though. All right. Here we go. Perfect position. Kicks right there like to see and then we open up the holy mountain then we pick the statue into Steve and we got blood money which uh, we're missing a little bit of health so loop, 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 loop. get a little bit of heals there a little bit of heals that's the magic of blood money so if you don't know blood money means that you have to trick kill something uh, so you're killing something in a way that it doesn't recognize the player is the person that killed them so in this case, I kicked a statue into him, so the statue killed the, the boss. Statue is just like uh, the environment, it, like a rock or something. It doesn't, doesn't, it's not owned by the player. That's why I dropped blood money, because it's like, hey, nature, he naturally died. <laughs> nature killed that guy, not the player who kicked the statue into him. And then we dig our way back up. Mm -hmm. Egg? What's this about egg? Oh, good call. We are going to need the egg because one of the bosses, to summon them, we need to throw three eggs at them, don't we? Big brain chat. Always thinking ahead, aren't you? Land it ahead there, Bambi. No wand edit also gives away... Uh, yeah, it's like a 5% chance for trick blood money. I would not recommend that method. Though I guess if you had a god wands and you weren't going to do any more editing, then maybe. Maybe. Can I offer you an egg in this trying times? Yes, you can. 
Yes, you can, Danny DeVito. Alrighty. So I'll show the rock uh, on the homing wand in a bit. Uh, I just don't want to waste it because I don't have a lot of charges. And when I finally do use it, uh, I'm hoping to get a lot of blood money off of it. Which will likely be in the fungal area. Alright, so we did any wand editing that we need to do. Our second mountain's intact so that we can always go back there and edit. So far, our setup for the all-boss run is going quite well. I'm just trying to clear this right side before I make my way over to the left side. Because remember, oh, gotta watch out for this poly. That was the poly I poured earlier. Left side is going to be uh, our fungal zone, so... It looks like the right side's pretty much cleared. Pretty much cleared. Yep, oil material too, so you can make a trick kill wand thing. Yep, I just need explosive projectile to, to build a really good trick kill wand. Wow. Okay, let's see if this spot will work for... It's going to be hard to react in time to the Ellie flask if he throws it. All right, uh, any moment now, he'll throw that Tele Flask and I'll be ready for it. Shit. Okay. Is this real life, Chad? Is this real life? Cheeks has just found out about uh, your YouTube. Watched a ton of your videos. Uh, super helpful. Oh, thank you there. The Cheeks. We're actually recording a YouTube video right now. An all boss run to throw up on the YouTube channel. Since uh, it's been requested in the comments by many people. So I figured I got to make it happen. And is this just fantasy? Yes. I think it is a fantasy. Because I don't know what the fuck's happening with this guy. in the. Uh... He's not throwing a teleportadium flask. Okay, I thought there was a pixel there for me to land. There was not. We are just trying to farm a simple Tele Flask off this guy, and he's got the worst RNG. Change your X and Y coordinates. He's stuck in mine or his? I think it's his that matters. And he's stuck in a pixel thing, so... Not really up to me oh, where really he's standing. You guys can see this guy right now. He is drenched in sweat. Truck, thank you for the gifted sub. Going out to the cheeks. Ah, truck, I appreciate the kindness, man. And the 46 total you get to, you gifted in the channel. This is pretty damn unlucky. I guess there's an acid flask. Those are those are scary. Those are those are how you die. Oh my god. The one time he throws that Tele Flask, I'm not going to be ready for it. I'm like numb to the 300 Flask. Oh my god. God damn it. Oh, come on, man. Oh my god. I can't believe that just fucking. <laughs> you little bastard. You can hear me. No. What? I caught that! I caught it! I was cheated! Luckily, he's starting to he's starting to throw him though. Thank you! The little bastard. That's the most I think that's the most flask I've ever sat there and just farmed. That was crazy. You just yeeting him. So the Tele Flask here isn't as big of a deal as it would have been if I got it in the first area. We got in the first area, it would have allowed us to, to get in and out of that first mountain without even risking the chance of collapsing it, but 
Oh well, it happens. One zone collapsed is not a big deal. Back to the right side to get hearts. I already got two hearts over in that right side. I don't know if there was any more over there for me. Um, so if you're curious what makes the Heliflash such a big deal, I'll do a, a quick demonstration. I'm just glancing at these holy mountains real fast to make sure there's no trouble. Let's clip that moment to make sure that I can be traumatized by it in the future. Thank you. Clearly looking out for my best interests. Alrighty. Some slime on me. Alright, so we're going to go in this real fast so I can show you the power of the, the tele flask that that guy throws. So this is teleportadium, it's 200% full. That's that the flasks that he throws are, are double, but it's not actually, it's actually like 125%. It just says 200%. Um, but yeah, so pretend I didn't dig that. All I'd have to do is pour the tele on myself and I can just point up and it takes me up. It's magical. It's magical. So it's a pretty damn good flask to have. Yeah, it's weird. the 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 pool of flasks doesn't look like it's that deep. Was that was that the pool right there? Oh no, it's over here, I think. Oh, it's split. It's like someone over there, someone over here. Huh. Weird. Yeah, the flask thrower will stop throwing flasks if um if they're not breaking. So if the flask that he throws at you stay intact, he can only have... Latali, do you know how many active flasks he can have out at a time? It's some certain amount. So if you want him to keep throwing them, you have to break the ones that are currently out there. Um, would you die instantly if you jumped in? No, no. There. So the, the deadliest things... Oh, is that him? Is that another one? The deadliest things that he throws is that one right there. That's a deadly one. But as you can see, it evaporates so it doesn't stay with the pile. And then the acid flask, which also uh, just like burns away in some of it and it turns into flammable gas and stuff. So the, the pits of liquids that, that remain are not ones that should be like crazy damage or anything like that. So you, you can sit around and, you know, jump in the pile. It doesn't really matter. You'll, you'll get toxic sludge damage, but outside of that, not too scary. Uh, Gil says, I guess it'd be, it'd be 10-ish. Is it 10 flasks? Yeah, I can't remember the exact number that he has out before he just says, nope. But then you just shoot them and break them, and then you can go back to farming them, so it's not too hard. Pretty easy. Okay, well, I was wanting to kick that into the fly for fun, but he was not having it. It's not a big deal to take damage. We do have the blood money stuff to farm, which... I'm just burning away all my health, so we're actually going to need to do that soon. There we go. Alrighty. Okay, the whole entrance area is just pain. Thanks for the fall there, too. I'm hoping to see like a, a, a clump of enemies so we can send the rock into it because it'll give us a lot of blood money. Oh, that was kind of scary. If that dropped electricity, we could have been in big trouble. Uh, that's actually needed right there. This is needed for one of the bosses, but it also is guaranteed to spawn on the surface. Just one of them. Some players will mess up and... Uh, is that a... Oh, it's a swapper. Uh, okay, we'll send a rock after these guys. I think this should be safe. I don't think the rock will credit us with a swap here. Oh, come on. Well, that's kind of dangerous near that swapper guy. It makes me nervous. There you go. Kill them all. So this guy got sent into the rock, which is fine because it means he'll suffocate, and then the gold that he drops will fly upwards, which will be will creating a space for it right here. So we welcome it. All right, it's a slow suffocation.
Bubbles. Don't really need bubbles. There he goes. He suffocated. Dropped off some gold. Uh, I, it checks 202. Uh, wait, I looked it up just so I don't uh, misremember. Uh, it checks a 220 pixel radius. If there is 15 items, it stops uh, attacking. So it stops throwing the flask if there are 15 items within a 220 radius. So if you if you bring him away from his original stack, he'll start throwing them again. You don't even have to break them. They even know that part. That's true. All right. So that rock. Whatever happened to that rock? I thought it was right here. Vanished. So anyway, some players will shoot a black hole, and it will eat this eye, and it will disappear. And it, like I said, one of these spawns on the surface. But if you accidentally, you know, destroy it. Then you have to go hunting in chests to find another eye, because it's the only way to fight the forgotten boss. Which we will hopefully get to fight this run, as long as I don't die. As long as I don't die before then. And uh, I'll try to remember that this is there in case something happens and I mess mine up. Always good to take a mental note of where the extras are. This luminous drill is coming in very handy. So the reason those uh, enemies drop blood money again, it was it was because the physics material, so it's it's rock with homing on it, was flying around hitting them, and you don't really own the rock; it's just material. You can't own the material because it's looked at as like it's just like if you have sand in the game, the sand isn't owned by the player. Uh, we'll drop that because we want that triple. Seems pretty interesting. Some blood money down there. Oh, get that guy back. Keep him back. A little scary. There's some eggs, but we already have the egg that we're looking for. Guy's going to spray out a ton of acid. So when we kill him, we got to make sure we're not like directly below him. Otherwise, it could be a problem. Got a hornet's nest down here, it looks like. There it is. There's two hornet's nests. Luckily, I have a really good wand. Hmm. Bouncing burst and a double. I guess I'll take it over the bubbles. How do you breathe when fighting the Leviathan? Uh, I think that's a boss, right? Yeah, the one over in the lake. Uh, there is a perk called Breathless. That can be useful. Uh, or it, dep it depends on your health and your situation. Don't forget that you can freeze water and create like a small zone that uh, that is above the... Or not above, but it's it doesn't have water in it, essentially. You can create a little pocket of air. Usually it doesn't come to that, though. I only fight the Leviathan when I'm, you know, in the late game. So by then... Suffocating is usually not much of an issue. The suff ooh, suffocation damage is uh, actually not that high. I don't want that heavy spread. I'm gonna swap that for the heavy spread. But yeah, you don't you don't suffocate that quickly. It doesn't like scale, which is kind of surprising because most things in this game the damage scales, but not suffocation. So early on, scary. Later on, not that scary. Come on. Uh, nothing too great here. I mean, normally this would be kind of an exciting fl uh, uh, wand to see. But, I mean, it's a non-shuffle. We already have infinite mana, so we don't need to worry about the mana charge. Really. Homing bubbles is good. Yeah, I do like homing bubbles, but if it were bubble triggers, I'd be a little more interested. There's a heart right there for us. Not bad. There's another heart for us right there, hidden in the ground. Always got to check these pockets of uh, gas and stuff. The hearts like to hang out. Gotta gotta know your formations, right? Toxic sludge. I want to check the bottom of this zone, and then we'll have this whole corner kind of checked out. 
Remember, be careful when you're in this fungal area. It is one of the deadliest areas in the game. Uh, well, for, for what you should normally have at this point. Usually you're not that powerful. Luckily, I'm pretty lucky. Things have gone well. Dude, hearts for days on today's seed. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. But yeah, there can be Ukos. There could be uh, Polymage. Robocops are in here. Like, all kinds of deadly stuff. So be very, very careful when roaming through here. Is that another flash thrower? It is. We're just going to kill him. I'm tired of him. Like he threw some toxic sludge or something. Hmm. That's a chest in water. So remember, whenever you're checking a chest in water, you want to do it in such a way that you can like open it and then get the heck out of the way real quick. So if it's electricity, it will not mess mess you up. Wait, what? Is it a fake that drowned? I guess it is. The fake chest that drowned. Hmm. Usually they're floating on top. I wonder what caused it to drown. Who knows? Invisibilium. Don't need it. There's this guy, which, you know, we could stab him a bit. Eventually kill him. Doesn't really matter too much. That is true. That's actually a good idea there, Kodiak. I didn't even think about that. We could dig to the free wand room because we have such a good uh, digging wand. Which, uh, I'll see if I can remember the angle. But yeah, so this room, usually there's uh, on a seed. Uh, there's another broken wand, actually. Um, on a, on a, a random seed, it's supposed to be like a 3% chance of spawning the leva, uh, uh, not levitation, the meditation. It's a, it's a black uh, square, it's called the meditation cube, and you meditate on it. And you get, uh, you get the option to, like a little portal appears, and you jump into it, and it takes you to a, a room where you get a free wand, and you can edit temporarily. Well... We did not see a meditation cube on this run, but that room always spawns. You just don't always get a meditation cube to get there. But since I have such a good wand, I can just dig my way to that room and uh, and see what the, the game was going to offer us anyway. So I think that's a, that's a great idea by Kodiak, so let's go ahead and do that. Fantastic idea. Take advantage of the runs where you get a god wand this early. Uh, there's lots of broken wands. Lots and lots of them, which we we're holding on to one already for the uh, for the Heesey base. So, all right. I think I have the angle down. Don't be surprised if I have to glance at a map or something to see if I got this right, because I don't do this very often. Even when I have really good digging wands, I tend to forget to that this is even an option. We're close. We are close. Let's see, there it is. Yo. So again, you normally would get to this room from a meditation cube. This room always spawns, but the cube doesn't always spawn. So we said, we said, screw it. Fuck the rules, and we broke into it. It didn't give us a great wand though. So, oh well. Oh well. Uh, did, wait, did you actually find a meditation cube in today's daily? For reals? Top right? Uh, Pineus is thinking they, they saw a meditation cube? Really? I may go glance at it to see if it's actually there. Just out of curiosity, because it would be perfect for the video to show what an actual meditation cube looks like. Because you don't see them that often. Eep. CK says she doesn't remember seeing one when she played through the daily. We could glance though. Pineus could be right. He could, he could have saw something. They're kind of they can be kind of a pain in the butt to find. They'll they'll hide them amongst coal and stuff. So, uh, please stop getting out on the rocks. Two doubles on that one. Double double. We don't need the double that bad. We have a triple already. It's not a big deal, but I like I like doubles. 
Uh, where would uh, the portal take you if you uh, uh, wait, to you if the meditation cube doesn't spawn? Okay, so yeah, it takes you back to the entrance of the this level. You can do. You'll, you, there's actually a similar thing that happens in Snowy Depths as well, and I'll show you in that one what it does, and then you'll get an idea of what happens. You, you can take portals. It's just if you didn't if you didn't like complete the the prerequisite, the part that should have been done beforehand, it just takes you to the entrance of that level. So Snowy Depths will have a same scenario. You'll see. Oh, double linear arcs. You know what? I'll let go of the linear arcs for the the heavy spread, I guess, or I let go of the heavy spread for the linear arcs. I mean. Linear arcs are pretty nice because they do add 5 damage each. So if we get us a spark trigger or something, we can add 10 damage off of those. For 0 mana. I like it. I think we cleared out just about everything here. Just about. Lord Wootman says I found one in... Uh I didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's it's one of those that it's it's really tricky to find out what it is. The the way you would legitimately find out that you're supposed to to meditate on it, and actually Man vs. Game when he was doing his playthrough of Noita, he had a uh, like a key so he could like uh, translate, you know, decipher whatever the messages in Noita. Like you can you can find out what each symbol, what letter, like uh, it, it means, and you can you know translate over the message. Well, whenever he translated over the the glyphs that are on it, they translate over to I think I think it said specifically meditate. So then you know, okay, you're supposed to meditate on it, and then you stand there for a bit, and then uh, and then you get the portal to appear. But anyways, I want to check real fast. I think Pineus Tina said, uh... You said you saw it in the top right, you think? It may have been yesterday's daily. Because you gotta remember that it changes every 24 hours. So it could be one uh, from the other day. But we'll glance, because we have infinite digging anyways. So when I jumped to the portal, it should have taken me to right here. Boom, it would just drop you, like, right there. Uh, which, like I said, you'll see whenever I do the exact same thing in the snowy depths. You'll see that it does that. The top right, you thought you saw some in some coal. Let's find out. Oops. Throwing my health away. Usually that is where it hangs out. You'll see him in some, like, a pile of coal. But it's possible he did see it. And uh, so, no, I do not have the edit ability. The, so whenever you jump into that room, you're supposed to get the ability to edit wands, but you have to have taken the portal, like, the legit way, if that makes sense. Like, you can't, um, you can't have just dug there. Which is why I was trying to find this, uh, if there was a meditation cube, that's why I was wanting to check it out. So it doesn't look like there was one, unless I, you think I missed it. It's, it's a very low chance of spawning, so... Is now nah, that's where it would have been. Okay, so it, it may have been yesterday's daily because, like I said, it changes every 24 hours over to a new seed. But yeah, so if you meditate on it, it'll take you to that room that I dug to, and not only that, you get you get the edit wands ability while you're in that room uh, until you leave the portal. Then once you jump out of the portal, it does it it takes it away and it doesn't come back if you jump back into the portal. You just lose it. So edit wisely. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and leave that zone. We did, we've done pretty good with uh with what we've got so far. Oop. We still have the heal chilling there. Put those up. Put the triple up. Keep moving. So this rock is going to be pretty nice here because there are when there's clumps of enemies here, sometimes they're in like some serious clumps and you can get like a lot of blood money from them. Which will uh, almost full heal us up, I'd imagine. So right off the bat, I'll start heading over to that one room we were just talking about. The room how there's uh, there's free wands in this level just like there was in the last level. And then I'll take the portal this time so you can see how it works. Let's go. 
this level's massive, so that's why I'm willing to go straight there from the beginning, because we're going to be exploring in here for a little bit. Just looking for good resources to help us with our all-boss run today. Because remember, some bosses, they have like really odd mechanics, so even though we have a god wand right now, it doesn't mean that it's like a, you know, top-tier wand versus every boss. Bosses are not that simple. Each one has like different mechanics from the others. And so what's good against one boss may be terrible against another. Um, okay, so we're up here on... Uh, pretty much we're at the bottom of that pit where the bridge boss spawns. So if I was to go directly up, we could go all the way up to the bridge and then also go to the first level. But instead, what we're going to do, so we hit the wall over here. We're going to dig straight down. And this is where uh, we can get our... There should be two free wands uh, down here. This room right here, the way you're supposed to legitimately get to it, is if there is an eye portal will spawn uh, just randomly in the snowy depths level. And it's a portal that you pour in some tele juice, and, a, and, a, uh, and a, a portal will just spawn above it whenever you pour the tele juice in it. It can be unstable or stable, it doesn't matter. Unstable or just regular, I guess I should say. <laughs> God bless, what the hell? What are you on about? No, Dunkbot has not become sentient and being punished. Simply recording us a YouTube video today because the, the YouTube community has been requesting for a while an all boss run and I, I didn't want them to feel neglected, so I figured today's the day we're going to do the run. Today's the day. Alright, so there's the portal. Let's check these wands first. Um, so this one's interesting because, yes, the mana charge is terrible, but again, we have add mana, so mana charge we don't really care that much about. Seven capacity is an upgrade, but the recharge time is pretty brutal. Uh, and not only that, but this wand right here is nine capacity. So it's like a similar stats, except for uh, this one's better because it has nine capacity over the seven. So, uh, but the six, the point six eight is is really, really killing me. Actually, I do kind of want that formation though. We'll, we'll grab it. I want that hex gone. We'll see. Uh, ooh. Okay. So the spread is terrible. We not really usable. If we we could we could turn this into an okay wand, but it's it's not worth the trouble. Spreads terrible. Castellate is also terrible. Which Castellate being terrible normally is not a big deal when you're using wrapping and stuff. But 0. 0.53 is so large that it actually will become a problem because the luminous drill can remove 0. 0.58, but the add mana actually adds 0.17. So 0.53 plus 0 0.17 would be 0 0.7 cast delay, which Luminous Drill cannot remove 0 0.7 uh, on its own. We have to do two Luminous Drills. It'd become an issue. And yeah, we could we could 5 wand it through the portal. Yeah, let's, let's show that. So let's uh, we're going to press E and 4 at the same time. So I just tapped it like that. Uh, apparently on some keyboards, I think like really nice keyboards, people were claiming that they have issues. I have like a little cheapy Logitech keyboard. And uh, I guess that gives me an advantage. Apparently, like key presses, it won't it won't notice like the hair of a fraction difference between them. I don't know. That's what people claim. Uh, but for me, I never have issues. I just press E and four at the same time, and then I press four by itself, and then it glitches it. You can actually see it looks like the spells dropped in the ground, but they're not. They're just glitching out. We jump through the portal, it takes us to the entrance of the level, and then if I want to drop this glitched wand, I press one, two, or three, either one of them, just one, boop, drops it on the ground. And there we go, that's how you carry five wands with you. Uh, but, don't think we're gonna do anything too crazy with what we got here. Uh, hmm. I think that's about it. Let's uh, move forward back in the level. Yeah, that's crit on burning. I wish it was crit on oil. If it was crit on oil, I'd have been like, fuck yeah. I've been getting hyped. Could be a heart here, maybe? Maybe, maybe? No, that's not a heart room. That is a potential wand room that didn't spawn a wand. For me, I just bound the T key to, to both uh, E, pickup, and uh, four, uh, and, oh, so it's, it presses it presses both four A and E for you with one key press. That's smart, that could, that could work. The whole point is it's trying to, you just gotta press both keys at the same time because E is what picks up a wand and then four is the hotkey to move to the fourth like wand slot. So or you could use it for one, two, three, four, it doesn't matter. So you just gotta press them at the same time. That's the trick to kind of glitching it out. 
Uh, but, you know, some people don't like to use the glitch stuff. And I usually don't like to use most glitches. However, that one's a pretty simple one. Now, I feel like it's not too game-breaking, so I, I tend to do it. There is definitely a thick worm roaming through here. Ow. I need to use the uh, the rocks to get blood money very soon because we're missing a lot of health and I don't want to use that heal yet, though I may need to. We're just clearing the top first. That may have been a good spot to do the blood money, maybe, maybe. you got here another reduce recharge man we already got we already got one of them so I don't think we'll go for another one it shouldn't be necessary oh we lived what a champ there he goes got him that time be very careful when jumping to this deep water it's not uncommon for these to spawn an electric box or something down there at the bottom is that another reduce recharge down there uh, there's a freeze, freeze charge. That's that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and grab the freeze charge. Come on. Small telly. That's pretty good for a run like this because we have lots of traveling to do. So let's uh, carry it back real fast. How far from the top are we? Didn't realize we were this far down. I thought we were pretty much at the top. Hold on. Let me check this zone then real quick. Probably going to grab the heal when I get back up there too. Might as well. So I'm yet to find a good blood money farming spot yet. Okay. You gotta be careful. Eh. Hawk raid. Hey, did we get hit by a Hawkeye raid? I appreciate you stopping by there, uh, Tusk. Hawkeye, I didn't see the thing go off, but I appreciate uh, you sending some peeps over here. We were watching a clip of you accidentally <laughs> lightning bolt yourself in the face earlier. Well, you kind of you knew you were immune to the explosion part of it, but the electric part I think caught you off guard. <laughs> Just gonna ignore the arrow trigger. Yeah, we probably should grab it, shouldn't we, Thalene? I was, I was I'm playing kind of greedy. I'm like I want something better, but you're right. I should I should grab that arrow trigger because there's no guarantees that we will get something better. We put up one of those small tellies up there. Uh, drop that, and we'll put these up here for now, and we'll grab our heal. We still got blood money that we can farm up, no problem. Kristen says, how do I use Telly to get back into a holy mountain? I thought it, uh, it was you teleport above and re-enter, but it keeps sending me down. To get back into the holy mountain. I'm a little confused by what you mean there, Kristen. You mean just 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 this part right here? Like whenever I'm traveling down there and I just, just shoot the wand down to bypass? Oh, the liquid. The liquid. Um, okay, so you want to get back into the mountain? What I'd recommend you do is you use the telly. I go up into the tunnel and then I put telly on myself and I point up. To send me into the last level, and then and then I just use the portal right here to 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 get back into the holy mountain. That that way is pretty consistent. I mean, there there's probably other ways of like you know pouring telly. Just put your mouse you know close to yourself. You'll telly just a little bit into the mountain, but instead that way is just easier. You know, consistent. Good night, shark. All right, what was I about to do here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Let's see what else we have in this level. Oh yeah, the arrow trigger. You said to grab that, which is a good idea. There's a crit. Crit's not bad. Not super convinced on grabbing it, but uh, let's grab this arrow trigger since it may be the best we get. Thaline is right. I was playing greedy. I see that arrow trigger. I'm always like, eh, I want better. But sometimes you don't get better. I'm spoiled in this run, though. I'm like, ah, I'm going to get all god loots. Only the best. Don't want to go too close to that area. There can be floating wands with very deadly spells in that area. Hmm. Got our arrow trigger chilling. Already using arrow. Yeah, we already are using arrow, but this is arrow trigger. That's going to... That's going to be potentially, like, I, anything, any, like, spark trigger, arrow trigger, spitter timer. One of those is going to be our main wand very soon. Because we're going to want to deliver a payload of spells. Go ahead and move our tele wand to number two spot. Oops, no, that's not the tele wand. This is the tele wand. There is an explosive box thing, or electric box, I mean. What you got there, game? You gotta be on your toes, because Uko could show up at any moment. Get kind of complacent moving around, just killing everything, no problem. It just takes one Uko to ruin the fun. I guess I'll pick it up for now. I'm not super hype about that stuff. Oh, there's a good blood money spot. So if you want to see what it looks like, it would just throw a rock in there. The the rock would go nuts. The rock didn't go super nuts. It got caught on this guy. But yeah, you can see there's a ton of blood money. This is, uh, each one can heal up to 5 HP. It depends on the amount of gold that's in the in the nugget, but uh, in that spot we probably had a good, like, I don't know, 20 or 30 HP at least, I would think. CEOs are one of the main things you look for when trying to find spot to farm blood money. We didn't need it in that case because, you know, we we're already full health, but still. This worm is going crazy. Jameson says spark trigger or bust. I feel like that sometimes, but I do get spoiled because we get the spark trigger so often. Especially in the early game, that's the best. Some sparks, some spark bolts, which we actually don't have many filler spells. Uh, we only have this one spitter bolt. I haven't really held on to a lot of filler spells. I'm gonna go ahead and grab these spark bolts because whenever we make a payload, uh, we're gonna need these these really cheap basic spells to to do anything significant with the payload. Hmm. Oh, I really wish you guys could see this guy right now. He is drawn. CK, I'm not sure if the gate bosses drops are consistent. Latali, do you remember on that one across like seeds? Oh shit, that's that's another good blood money spot. If I shot the rock out and it just goes kills them all, we would get another you know good amount of, of blood money. But again, we don't really need it right now, so we're just gonna shoot them down the old-fashioned way. Johnny B with a 21 month there. Oh, what? What, 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 what? Who shot me? Oh well, now we do need blood money after getting shot a couple times there. It says moist it up and destroy us all. Twenty one months. Wow, love you. Well, love you guys, moist mob, and dunk your old. Hey, what the hell? Why did the chat get love and I got a you're old? The heck is this? It's bullcrap. That's what that is. Appreciate the twenty one monther there, Johnny B. Do you think you could do a triple front flip uh, for the video? Uh, really, you got some high hopes for me, don't you? Fine, at the end, when I kill all the bosses, we'll do a triple front flip. Off of my chair. Onto the ground. Seems safe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Does the uh, blood money remove the bonus gold for uh, environmental kills? It does not. So uh, you still get the extra gold and it's in the form of blood money. Can you do a blindfolded for added spice? Of course, of course. I'll go ahead and juggle a couple chainsaws while I'm at it. Make sure you guys don't fall asleep during the, the front flip. This worm has been like, I've been seeing him all, all along our journey here, but I don't know where he's going. The reduce recharges are plentiful in today's run. There's a heart right there. Thank you, thank you. Where, there he is. I've been searching all over for you, friend. He almost got me on that. He almost got me. The god's already pissed, so we don't care about him going... No oh my goodness! <laughs> He's got a brother! That scared the heck out of me. I was like, why does the worm look like this? And so the portal disappeared because they just ate away at the portal. Well, fantastic. Worm. There's a 50% chance of them dropping a heart, so I would like to kill them if I can. It seems, though, that they dug to the next level. Oh. Dang, how the heck did he get all the way up there? There we go. There's one heart. Now we just got to find that other one to get the other heart. Drink some of the worm blood so that we can see through the walls. Get that wormy vision. Should help us see a bit, get an idea of where he went. Did he go up this way? Huh? I think he came from this way. Uh, there's pollen, a long telly. Hmm. New guys in the corner puking his guts out. Devin, thanks for the follow. I remember when dodging these tank like things, you want to move in like a like a circle around them, making them the the like center point of the circle. Uh, I don't know what this guy's shooting at. But yeah, it's make, making this the center point, you kind of move in a circle around them. This allows you to, to move faster than the rate that they turn. And uh, that'll keep them kind of just rotating forever. So you'll notice whenever I'm dodging, oops, whenever I'm dodging, even if I can't get all the way to the top, I'll start to move back in the same pattern. Like I just stay on this like circular trajectory, I guess. But every once in a while, yeah, you can get a little, a little shot, off, shot off on you. Miss Skag, thanks for the follow. Is, is this the same worm? I don't know. He went everywhere, though. Had an interesting uh, wand spawn in a, a run earlier. Uh, it didn't have any spells on it, just a couple of multicasts. <laughs> that is a weird one. It does happen sometimes where you just see these wands and you're like, what the hell is this? It happens. Uh, you can also sit on top of them so long, uh, neither, uh, wait, sit on top of them and so long as neither of you move, it won't shoot. True, if you sit directly on top of them, which can be kind of scary sometimes to get yourself lined up because they'll, they'll pummel you. Really hasn't been anything too scary so far, so I'm, I'm nervous. I'm playing like a little skeptical. Ooh, this is like exactly what we're looking for. Um, it's got a large capacity. The the castellate is a little brutal. Because remember, the luminous drills can only remove 0.58. So we'd be 0.47 castellate on this wand. And then this, this add mana will um, add 0.17. So that means we got to remove, what is that, 0 0.64? Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm.
Could use a reduced recharge. <laughs> You're always one chainsaw away. Yeah, we are one chainsaw away. <laughs> this is, yeah, the wiener wand with balls. That's how you know they're good. I'm gonna drop this for, oh, what the hell? This may be a different worm, I don't know. He is burning. He's going crazy. Any luck? No hearts. He dug away so many portals, this worm. So I'm gonna move to the next area real quick. I think I can come back up if I need to. Um, let's see, what all are we gonna put up here? That double lights. I guess we can put the light here for now. Uh, hmm. Triple on that wand. Kill Steve real fast. Ooh, heals. Oh, what the heck? Came flying out of there, didn't he? Let's go kill him over here. Oh, the statue. All right, well, let's just freeze him to death and kill him that way. Rude. All right, so right now we're freezing him, and then we just kick him. And then it takes him to 1 HP. We kill him that way. Which, uh, I was going to kill him, kill him with a statue, but... This does happen sometimes where the statue kind of freaks out and glitches into the ground. And you got to be aware when that happens to adapt and change your strategy because I wouldn't be able to kick that into him. So I made both stars now. Uh, I'm in New Game Plus. Uh, should I make the stars collide? Yeah, you, you can. Um, if, if I mean... You can do it in other runs, but if you want to complete the sun quest, you do need to get it done at some point. Uh, Breathless. We could grab Breathless to be used on the, uh, the Leviathan whenever we're going through all that water. Could be helpful there. There's a spitter timer that I was referring to earlier, saying that we probably would need one. I don't know if we're going to use that orbiting arc. Don't need another one of those. Hmm. Toss, toss, toss. We do have oil material. We could do something like oil material and a luminous drill, combine them with the add mana, and then we have a double after that. But without that oil material, we just simply won't have... Uh, yeah, we just don't have enough removal. Oil material is necessary. We want to cast both the oil and the luminous at the same time. And then in this case, we could swap out the arrow trigger. Put on a linear arc and a triple. Put those three spark bolts that we saw earlier. Actually, no, wait. Instead of... No, wait. We'll, we'll leave that. Hmm. Then again, we're going to be shooting oil everywhere. That shit is going to be annoying. As you can see, there's oil all over the place already. Huh. We'll grab Breathless. Reduce doesn't work. Reduce does work. Which I guess if we, if we swap to the spitter timer. Spitter timer is cheap. Because the air because you gotta remember arrow trigger is 35. Spitter timer is 10. So by doing that, it does open up the monopole enough that if we were to use a reduce recharge, I think our monopole will be okay. Okay, we're okay to shoot that. But let's say we use the arrow trigger in its place. Now, as you can see, we empty out our mana. It's too mana expensive. So, I do that. Our reach is kind of terrible, though. Okay, saying there's gonna be a shop to the left. It's actually we have to go to the right side anyways, because we gotta turn in our broken wand. 
And I cash it in. Hmm. Drop the arrow. I don't think I need that anymore. We're just putting multicast on this one right here to take up space. In fact, let's just move them here. Because the stats aren't as bad. The mana is terrible on this one, but at least the castle isn't as long. I like that part. So the heal bolt is obviously huge for us. And... I guess I'll go ahead and grab this heal now. Because we have the heal bolt for backup later if I get a little bit of damage done to me. Uh, hey, what's up, Mind's Eye? Where you been, man? I was worried about you. Hmm. Oh, well, I was curious about you earlier. I didn't see you. I was wondering if everything was all right. So good to see you're alive and kicking. All right, I think our setup, we're just going to go like this for now. It's not great, um, but I, I want to get a multicast. I, I need to get more filler spells, which I left those in the previous level, so I'll go grab that too. Back to the action here, chat. So uh, one thing that uh, Zenimental was talking about, if, if he was trying to remove all of the recharge using only Luminous Drills, but the uh, the initial problem with his setup is that without doing a double Lumi Lumi, um, so wait, the, the order that Zenimental said would be Mana, Lumi, Lumi, Triple, Lumi, and then blah, blah, blah. So the problem with this setup is you need to have a double in something, something uh, for this to, to be a thing. Because by having this setup like this, let's see. And wait, Lumi, Lumi, what was the order that he said? Let's just do Luminous Drills only. We don't have to build out the full entire wand. But the cast delay is the issue on this one, Zenimental, that... Uh, you're gonna come across on that. Wait, where where was it? Uh, mana, Lumi, Lumi, Triple. Okay, so we'll just do Lumi, Lumi, Triple, so you can see. Um, so you see that stutter that's going on there, which is still not bad, right? It's still it's it's pretty pretty decent. But that stutter is because this add mana is adding 0.17 to the cast delay of 0.47. So 0.47 plus 0.17. Uh, means we get 0.64. The luminous drill removes 0.58. So that that 0.64 minus 0.58. That's the that's the remainder. That's what you're seeing. That little that little choppiness. Why it's not like a machine gun, which is why I had built it out with the um, with what I had there for a bit. But this this also works. Um, this also gets the job done. So it's not a big deal. Second lumi uh, or linear arc. Which we have that one orbiting arc we could slap on there too, maybe. That's what the the these other things are for. They're they're just trying to remove uh, extra castaway that this admon is adding there. Um, hmm. uh, do we get a Dunkbot 2.0 cosmetic? Would be fun. Of course, of course, there will be a 2.0. The day it comes out, there will be an exclusive. To because uh, the very first day that the sweatshop was ever created, the little Dunkbot uh, 1.0. Uh, there was a Founders cosmetic, so there will be a, uh, the equivalent for those people that are here for, for 2.0 as well. Uh, Alright, so we need to get, get those filler spells that I left back earlier. So let's uh, let's do some digging here. Oops. The, the delays are per spell basis. It won't stack. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, so basically, it's like this first grouping is the one that has that, del that, that cast delay issue. Yuzi says that'll be my 60th birthday present. Oh, hilarious. Hilarious. That's... Hmm. And you put the add mana uh, into the timer payload. So you could do that, but then we're not wrapping uh, to cast it again. So I guess, would, would that be... Is that is that a better mana output? Let me think. But right now, if we... We have, uh, what is this? A remainder of eight being cast twice, which would be 16. 
if we had this in the payload, it'll be a remainder of 20. So yeah, it actually would be a better mana output. Earlier though, it wasn't an option because we were using the arrow trigger. Arrow trigger was um, was what I was originally theory crafting around, but then we came across a spark timer. So I was just like, ah, fuck it. But yeah, this uh, add mana would actually probably be, we'd be getting, what is that? Like four more mana per rotation. So we could do get away with, get rid of this, which now we have a delay. But then remove the or move the mana into the timer. Actually, wait, what are we missing there? Oh yeah, but in this case we are we still need to get rid of some uh, some recharge time. I forgot that that was even playing a role there. But yeah, the reduced recharge was adding that as well. And we don't have a heavy spread, so I guess it is here to stay. <laughs> uh, quad. Let's think. Quad in these four spells. Too much. Triple. These three. Still too much. Damn it. Um. Double in those two. I guess we can use that one. Add in the other linear arc. Hell, we could add the orbiting arc, I guess, in this scenario. Get some good damage in here. Uh, you can save four mana. You're talking about by doing a, a double luminous drill, since the other luminous drill would cost uh, 10 rather than 12, and then wrap to that one. But... In that scenario, wouldn't we take up one more spot casting? Wouldn't we have to do like a double luminous drill, luminous drill kind of thing? So we'd lose like a, a capacity, uh, one one capacity extra, something like that. So we got some spark triggers. I got to remember those are there. Not gonna use the trigger. We have a we have a spark timer. Later, Stoner. Did you see the new ads uh, incentives? They are uh, they are alive, or at least to me, it's uh, quite the joke. I never anything that they they try to encourage uh, playing ads uh, on Twitch. I just ignore the stuff altogether. I get messages about it where it's like, uh, enjoying this program where you play a certain amount of ads and you get a certain amount of revenue. I ignore that because in my opinion, ads on, um, like especially live streams is very annoying. Um, like video ads are, are frustrating. So I just ignore those altogether. I'm like, yeah, I don't care what you're offering. I feel like it's really annoying to the community to have to watch video ads constantly. Um, Damn it, I feel like there's something else. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this five cast. I gotta free up a, an inventory spot. <laughs> Good guy dunk. It's not, I mean, I, I feel like it's kind of like obvious, right? It's like old technology. It feels like the old way of advertising products is, and they're trying to like force it on Twitch uh, for live streams. YouTube I, I, has more of a place because it's not like, you know, live content necessarily. When you're watching some live content and you're at some exciting boss fight, the guy, you don't know if he's going to live or die, and then, oh, an ad for some random-ass thing that you probably don't care about. It, it, it kills the hype, right? The whole advantage to live content over stuff that you're watching on YouTube is that you're watching something that you don't know what the heck's going to happen. You know, it could be anything. And so you're just like, oh, hell yeah. But, okay, the audio is actually fucked up. Oh, man, I hate when the audio does this. All right, it's working. Um, yeah, you're, you're excited. You never know what the hell's gonna go on, but in, in the, the video ads just kind of, they, they take that away. Because most of the time, you know, et, already like edited, you know, good, clean to watch, all that stuff that's on YouTube is, is, is easier to watch because they've filtered it down to just the content. They've taken out the boring filler stuff. So if you're willing to watch the live stuff, that means you're there for the, for the potential hype and that's what I feel ads kills the magic of some of the live stream stuff. Not saying that it always like hundred percent kills it, but it just feels like there's gotta be a better way for advertisers to get across their products without being so intrusive. Oops, sorry.
check Discord real quick so you can see the guaranteed income. You don't have uh, to worry about subs. Uh, they uh, they offer the small guys. Let's see what uh, Solar is going on about. Uh, let me see. What? I, mean, I don't know if I'm allowed. Am I allowed to read these a lot aloud? I think it's probably fine, right? Three minutes of ads per hour. You have to, you stream three minutes of ads per hour, and you have to stream thirty four hours a month, and that is what they offer you there. Let me see if Solar says I'm allowed to show. Uh, he says, "Yeah, read it." Yeah, so it says, like, basically their incentive program, which it's, I guess, sorry for the YouTube peeps, this is a distraction for a moment, but it is interesting about this kind of stuff, you know. It's, it, basically, Solar was is told to stream three minutes of ads per hour, streaming 35, 34 hours a month, and you would get $20. What the fuck? What kind of shitty deal is that? So they're offering you, what would that be, like, 75 cents an hour? What a deal. What a deal. That's a hell of a deal, Solar. 75 cents? You can almost get something off the dollar menu at McDonald's here in the US. Almost. Not quite. Vince says 34 hours a month. Dunk does that weekly. Yeah, I think they they base it off of like his, his what he's currently going off of. Cause Solar doesn't stream as much these days because of his internet issues. So I'm, I'm, it's not something that Twitch, you know, it's not like a manual thing that they like wrote up. It's an automated system that looks how many hours you've streamed, tries to calculate off viewers and all that stuff. That's what I'm saying. That's why you know people will say like good guy Dunk for not playing like ads or whatever. But I'm like, to me, it's not a matter of like being you know, good or bad. I mean, you'd have to be blinded by greed to screw over your community for, you know, such small amounts. It's like, oh, you could play an ad and make like 50 cents right now. It's like, I would rather, I would pay you 50 cents to not have to annoy the shit out of my community for that stuff. Not even because it's like being a good guy. It's like, it's just not entertaining. It's just annoying. It's bad business. Um, all right. Double trigger. Oh, God, let's grab that. Got to get those dollars. Yeah. I guess it's just because Twitch, that's where they make their money. I I would assume that subs does it pretty well for them. But, again, I have no idea how many. Uh, what, what do they have, like, the meme that people post where it's, like, never subbed, ad blocker, s stolen neighbor's Wi-Fi, where they try to claim, you know, <laughs> they're not, not getting any money from me kind of thing. And, um... I mean, I have no idea how much that leeches off of, like, Twitch. That they're like, we have to play these ads to make up for these these free viewers. I, I don't know. There's got to be another way. All right, Broken Wand. Here we go. That's the whole reason we were holding on to it. And there was more. Oh, of course we get. Damn it. It's a Shuffle Wand. But it's stats, I mean, they're sick. They're always sick when there's shuffle wands on this thing. So, too bad I didn't carry a second broken wand. I'll keep in mind that that's there in case we get the unshuffler. Damn, damn, damn. More rocks. <laughs> that is true. There are more rocks on that thing if we wanted to farm some blood money with them. More rocks. There's a triple on it. We are pretty good on our triples, though. We have a triple here. Um, I guess we have a, that spread triple there. I'm more interested in using these double triggers that we just found. It could be some some spice on it. Uh, and the right side should it does not have a shop, which means there's guaranteed shop in this level. So since it's not on the right side, right side it must be on the left side, which is what CK was saying earlier. Got a heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Latali says, "Read me." Oh, what I missed there, Latali. Latali. Uh, but Twitch pl plays ads either way, right? Is it not worth to uh, automate uh, disabling pre-rolls? Pre so that's, uh, yeah, that that's, that's an interesting conversation right there. See, I don't think it plays ads for you. So let's, let, let's say you're just watching a stream, right? You get an ad when you, you, you know, a pre-roll when you join the stream. But from there, 
I don't think you get any more ads if you're not refreshing or going away to another stream. At least I never have ads just randomly pop up unless you have a person that auto plays ads uh, every so often, which big streamers, that's part of their contract. They have to play ads like every hour or whatever. You know, they work out their own system where it'll be like, you know, two minutes of ads every hour, three minutes of ads, whatever. But for me, I have the pre-roll ones because you're not. there's no option of just doing no ads. But with the pre-roll ones, you are forced to watch an ad at the beginning, but once you're in, you're in until you refresh or whatever. Uh, people are saying there's a really good chest in today's daily. What is that right there? Oh, that's the thing fell through the ground from there. Change out your digging wand because you may break the hourglass. True. True, good thinking. Give me one second, I'll set us up. I'll set us up the bomb. League streamers uh, just roll like four to seven ads uh, when they're in queue and uh, and it's ass. Yeah, it, because again, what they've done is they've disabled the pre-rolls, which means that you can jump into a stream, instantly get in there, but then every, they, they worked out a system, usually it's every hour, a streamer has to play a set amount of ads to compensate for the fact that there are no pre-rolls. But, if you don't have a contract with Twitch, and you want your community to get as few ads as possible, by having the pre-rolls there, people are stuck watching that annoying ass pre-roll, but once they're in, they're just in, unless they refresh. And I, so it's, yeah. Uh, Lysergic says I prefer pre-rolls. It's like it's like picking your poison, right? They're both shit at the end of the day. But I, I, yeah, that's the way I have it as well. Uh, Lysergic, or uh, I don't I don't know if it's the better choice. I'm sure there's streamers that choose uh, the other because they they can control when the ads are playing and all that. It's uh, yeah, it's it's a frustrating system. Like I said, it feels like old old tech or something. What are we gonna do here? Kind of want to hold on to that electric arc. Thalinus is fuck Twitch. It's just they got they they need an innovator. They need somebody who's approaching things a little more creatively. Which they have tried to get better. I know there's been there's been like months where people are like, hey, did you see this kind of ad that Twitch is playing now? And it'll be like an ad that lets the stream keep going and it just like is you know, it reminds you of like soccer games. Have you seen now soccer games? Because they're, they're so long, they can't they can't be like in the middle of this like crazy moment and an ad just plays, which for your, interna your international people, Amer international football, Americans call it soccer. But yeah, they can't be so intrusive. So they have to get creative with the way they do their ads and everything, at least from what I've seen. And Twitch needs something more along that line because you don't want to interrupt the live activity. Yeah, the YouTube viewers are definitely skipping the rant right now. They're, they're getting the hell out of there. I can't decide on what we're going to build. We're just like in this weird place of like, I want... I don't have any free spell spots. We're going to have to drop the spark bolts, which I need them. But we'll drop them for the moment. Uh, and the triple as well. Electric arc goes up. Small telly out. Light goes here. Alright, so we have four free spell spots. I still don't have a good way to dig, do I? What the fuck? Just build the best wand you've ever built in your goddamn life? Now that's a good idea, Solar. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that? I got an idea. We can. St we'll, we'll be able to get through. I think I have an idea. Hopefully I don't fuck it up. If I fuck it up, then I have to dig the the long route. Because we can still dig to it regardless. Let's just not mess it up. Just don't mess up, Five Head. This audio delay is a little bit annoying on it. So I may have to do a mod restart soon to get the audio to be good. Be good, audio. The soccer ads are still so obnoxious, though, since they zoom the shit out and uh, play the ad. Can they just figure out how to not play an ad for 120 minutes and calm their greed? Yeah, like I said, it, I mean, it, it's, I'm sure it's just a matter of time until somebody comes up with a good way that, like, you know, gets a product uh, advertised that, you know, people, you know, actually sees customers come in and uh, at the same time does not ruin a broadcast. One day.
<laughs> we already had banner ads. People just want to shoehorn in commercials. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, sometimes it's hard to say if it's like, is this necessary to, to operate and not go bankrupt? Or are they, is it greed? I don't know enough about all that, you know, the marketing behind all that stuff to know which one it is. Holy shit, that was the chest that people were talking about, I think. There is some loots in there. Is that, wait, which homing is that? Accelerated homing and then uh, the fee? That'd be nice. Not a bad chest. Imagine like I'm playing Noita and in the background is like this big ad for Pepsi or something. Like that's the future of advertising. Like this enemy charging me up is like just like, like a, co a, a, a Coke can or something. <laughs> That's the future of advertising. Uh, okay, accelerated homing and then a fee. That's going to be our two big ones. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Wait, actually... So yeah, we should be able to do infinite heals. I think we can come up with something pretty nice there. Right? Right? Hey, there's a heal right there. Imagine playing Noita, but spells are NFTs. <laughs> You're hovering over and it, it like advertises the person who owns it. Linear Arc, owned by Latali. Latali will sell you this, <laughs> this Linear Arc for $5,000. In before somebody makes that uh, NFT mod. I think NFTs, I mean, NFTs are probably the last of many people's worries in that, that whole world because crypto in general, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but it's been, it's been wild times. Bitcoin is like down to like uh, 20K or some shit. I mean, I don't know if it's going to return and be back to like $5 billion in a couple months, but the whole markets in general have been tanking hard. I'm assuming NFTs fucking roasted. Hmm. <laughs> bit, bit Ome um, Omega Lol coin. Yes, that that coin. Uh, all right. Let's see if I can do this without fucking it up. Don't fuck it up. Yeah, you see that? You like those moves? You like those moves? Pour in the telly juice. Or yeah, or could we just tell we could have just tellied up here like Latali saying. Instead of even taking the, the risk even even a little bit. Uh what all do we got here? Another luminous drill. Blah 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 blah. Aww, disappointment. We have sadness. That is what we got as a gift for our hard work. Nothing but sadness. Without Dunkbot, Dunk is making his own sound effects. <laughs> you guys have infiltrated my brain, alright? <laughs> Pineus says my cat is conducting biological warfare with the massive shit he just dropped in here. So on that note, I'm going to pass out. Good luck and good night. Good night there, Pineus. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to be the one that needs the luck, not me. Be careful. Hmm. So, Heasy Base, you guys know me, I'm always anti Heasy Base. I say I wouldn't recommend staying out in here too long, it's pretty dangerous. But I do have explosion immunity. That's the reason I've hung around in this level much longer than I normally would. Because these canisters right here, that canister, that hits for 110 damage. That is insane. Crazy damage. But we're explosion immune, so we don't have to worry about that crazy damage so much. 
Uh, that's not the way. I don't think there's anything there that I want. But yeah, st we're still going to move on. Not too interested. We haven't done any boss killing yet, though. We've really held off on slaying the bosses. I could have went and killed... At least the spider boss, the pyramid boss, you know. Oh, hey. Something of interest. Homing as well. Nice, nice, nice. Ooh, another explosion immunity, which we do not need. Vampirism, meh. Stainless armor, meh. We already have one explosion immunity. There's no reason to go for another. Uh, we could consider phasing. Be greedy. Yeah, why was I greedy? I'm a fool. Hey, there's rocks though. We could uh, do rocks unlimited spells. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Uh, why is there a guy with a clock on the screen? Are you okay? Are you losing it, William? Have you lost your mind? Uh, there's homing. Not bad, not bad. That ping pong is kind of tempting. Kind of very tempting. Do, 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 do. All right, here's what we're going to do. So without ping pong, it's just so we made a little lightsaber. Ping pong cost zero mana we attach it to the luminous drill it makes it where it flies out like that and because we have it so rapid fire make it into a laser we're going to use this bad boy uh i believe do a little bit of killing oh that costs too much mana though what oh we don't need this anymore then duh and in fact i think we can add a third luminous drill that's not bad. The reason for adding more luminous drills is uh, they actually it does it does do more damage because it's shooting off three luminous drills at once, so it'll 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 pump some more damage here. So we're gonna use this to do some boss slaying. Uh, I'm gonna lay this wand here and this one on the ground. We are gonna cut. We are gonna use this uh, later. Like, uh, don't worry. I'm not just completely abandoning it. Then we're gonna use this as our telly wand. Woo! It'll do. All right. <laughs> Latali later, Latali. Yeah, Nacy, it took me a moment. I was wondering, I was like, wait, how am I going to get rid of that mana problem? Then I realized, oh, wait, the reduce recharge. There's no reason for it to be there now. So Ping Pong Luminous Drill, crazy powerful. Uh, but also is, uh, is very good in boss runs because most wands don't really do great against multiple bosses. You're usually building for, like, you know, one specific or something. But th this wand can actually work pretty well on a, on a couple bosses. One of the few. Oh, I forgot to build the infinite heal wand, didn't I? Oh, well, I'll fix that in a moment. Do, 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 do. Um, hmm. D cost 120. Wow. Wow. So for now, we can bounce these heals into ourself with this trigger. Okay, not there apparently. I'll have to put the add mon on there just so I can fire this faster. Get in there. There you go. Uh, which... 
we should be able to do uh, something later with the fee because we'll be able to shoot infinite heals thanks to the fee because the fee casts a copy of every projectile so the healing bolts on the same one means that it'll shoot off as a heal but right now we're we're not going to need that yet that comes soon soon Maybe mix your tele wand with your healing wand. Problem is though, I'd have to, to put the fee on there with the tele wand. That cast slay is going to be kind of annoying. Uh, but in a bit, I think we will be able to build some kind of tele, maybe tele heal wand. Just need a little more time. What was on this wand again? Oh yeah, another reduce recharge. I me. Just murdering everything. By the way, these are the hands that you kick, and then it spawns a little robo dude or whatever he is. We do not need them though, because we aren't doing that quest. That's for the end of everything. You have to kick three of them. There's another one. See, there's two fingers now because you already kicked one. Hey, there we go. Progress. Show off the homing rock and trick blood money for the YouTube peeps. We did. We did it earlier. We farmed some, uh, some, uh, some blood money with it. Got a good chunk of blood money, in fact, from it. Vintage says, what the fuck? This turned into a rave. Yeah, our ping pong Loomis drill. Really glowing. Hey, what the heck, man? Oh, it was just not working. So we're going to use this for both the pyramid boss and for the alchemist. The alchemist, however, you got to know what you're doing on that guy, so... Uh, whenever you're using ping pong loomy so we'll discuss these bosses let me get to them first this is an all boss run and we're just starting to to do a little bit of boss slaying because there are 12 bosses to get through remember that there are 12 pillars that you unlock um which if you're curious i guess i can pull it up real fast for you here that way i can show it at least on stream one time i'll try to remember to put this in the description below but um here is a list of all the like it's like in-game achievements people refer to them as the achievements and uh, each pillar represents like an unlock in Noita. And then specifically, there's actually a row of pillars here that we're going to zoom in on that are the boss pillars. And if you count them, there's one, two. See, these, each one of these is a boss. Uh, and you count them all. There should be a total of 12 pillars on this row right here, uh, which obviously we don't, we don't, really, don't, don't worry about that machine gun want. Uh, but the dragon and up, there should be 12 of these guys on here that we are going to... Um, go through today for the for the all boss run so uh we're gonna be going for the boss number one here which would be the spider boss uh, or the pyramid boss and if you do this entire run you'll unlock all of those pillars each time you kill a boss it unlocks a pillar though once you load the pillars in um if you kill bosses after it you need to do like a new run before you, you'll see the pillars show up all right so this boss right here this boss is actually vulnerable to being frozen meleeed. So if you hit him with a freeze and you kick him whenever his, uh, uh, I think his mouth has to be open, actually, before you can hit him with a freeze kick. But I anyway, he can be frozen and kicked, which will which will insta kill him or take him to one HP. Uh, it's actually pretty pretty helpful trick on the trick on this guy. But uh, the way we're gonna fight him is the good old fashioned way, which is you get close enough that he spawns in, and he tries to hit you with his spider legs. Now, if you're melee immune, you don't have to worry about those spider legs at all. And you just, you know, you just absorb the hits. He spawns some minions, which uh, they actually do some okay damage. So, kind of be, be be cautious of those guys. And there are enemies nearby that kind of roam into the fight, which is which is very annoying. So after a little bit, you'll see, see he did a little animation. That means his mouth's about to open up. And then when his mouth opens, you just, you know, blast him. And when his mouth is closed, um, you'll notice that your shots kind of ricochet off of him. So that's why you're having to wait for him to open his mouth. Uh, also... Uh, they're plasma beams, like plasma shots, which are, you know, where are, where are our plasma shots? Stuff like this, plasma beams, plasma cross, and I believe the green one as well that we, we just passed up. We could, we should have carried it with us. We could have done a boss with that as well. Um, you can, you can actually shoot him even when his mouth is closed and insta-kill him. Um. Hi, YouTube. Hi, chat. This stream <laughs> is sponsored by Spider Clean. The only body wash that will get your beautiful all right, spider all right, hold on. clean and happy. Hold on, I gotta mute the alerts. I gotta, I gotta mute the alerts. <laughs> Where are the alerts? Damn it, alert box. Uh, properties? Uh, 
I think this is, yeah. Okay, we turn those off. Don't worry. Don't worry, YouTube. You're safe from the troll TTS now. God damn it. God damn it. Oh my goodness. Could have been such a badass wand. Ruined by the always cast disc projectile. Uh, there is, however, a plasma beam on it, which that's kind of cool. We can maybe make use of that in a short range homing. So we'll, we'll snag these bad boys. Grab the heart. Um, ah, you know what? I shouldn't have grabbed. All right, hold on. Let's, let's head over here. So we can't kill the alchemist yet. We can, but we, I got to wait for a moment. CK says, be happy I wasn't the one that tested it. You guys are freaking trolls. Uh, okay. Real quickly, we gotta run back. I know it's annoying, but uh, I don't have any free spots for the after we kill the alchemist. And we kind of, kind of need those. Uh, okay, what? Get off of that. There's an Uko. I hadn't seen any Uko so far this run. I was wondering what was going on. Today's daily has been very generous. Very very good daily run. Very safe one. So far, at least. Uh, oh, another worm? What the heck? Didn't drop a heart, though. Alright. Um, hmm. What if... Tentacle, we'll, we'll show some cool stuff with the tentacle in a bit. Spitter timer. Homing plasma beam. And we shoot that. Alright, I think that should work. Homing is attached to plasma beam. It's kind of annoying that a saw blade flies out, but that's whatever. Uh, let's get rid of some stuff. Drop that. Yes, we dropped the arrow trigger for now. I'm going to be sad and need that later. Crits. We'll put that there. Just take up space. Uh, three spots. That's pretty good, right? Oh, we can we can also put the Nala. Um, place of one of these tellies. Who needs that, right? Um, okay. If we were to do that, oh, we need another one of these luminous trails. Never mind. We'll put the. Yeah, it's three spots. That's fine. Nala comes later once you're telling faster than what we're telling right now. So we're going to get to kill three bosses, I think. Yeah, bridge boss time. So I guess I'll just start ranting on the bridge boss here. Remember, I'm not telling you necessarily every way to kill him and every weakness the boss has. But I do think if you're going to be fighting these bosses or you're watching the all boss run, all boss run... I just want you to have a general idea of what they can do and so that whenever you're in the fight, you can come up with your own creative like ways to kill them. You can use the same solution, obviously, but that, that doesn't mean there aren't hundreds of other ways to kill these boss bosses. There's tons of ways. So there's no point in me going over all of them. I just kind of cover general mechanics about them, and then we move on to the next. Uh, some of the other bosses, though, I'll kind of stand around and, and talk with the chat for a moment because they may be kind of complex. And this boss right here is one of those bosses that there is uh, there's a lot to talk about, in fact. So the first thing I like to do when I'm fighting this boss is I create an escape route. And that's because this boss shoots poly shots. He shoots all kinds of dangerous stuff. So I like to have a route in case of emergency that I can, that I can go to stay safe. That'll make sense in a moment if the, if this fight, uh, which is, which is very possible that I, I, I may have to run for a bit. So if you're running from this boss, you want to have solid terrain between you and the boss because poly shots will be flying out like crazy, tele shots, all kinds of deadly stuff. So get some solid material between you and the boss. And then uh, the way this boss works is you will, there's a trigger point right here, uh, right, I think it's here. The trigger point right here that only becomes activated once you have touched this point right here. Oh, I forgot to grab the, the orb on top of the pyramid. I'll just grab this one. It's whatever. But there's a, you just have to stand here. You don't even have to grab the orb. And it activates the second trigger point, which is right here. So what we're gonna going to do is 
we're gonna shoot off this right here, this uh, uh, spitter bolt timer that'll have a homing and a plasma beam packaged in it. So when I shoot it, it should fire out this plasma beam. That plasma beam will actually have a weird interaction with the boss. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'm gonna shoot at the boss so you can see it and then we'll, we'll kind of explain what happened. So let's walk into the second trigger point so, so the boss spawns in. So the boss is spawning in right now and then we'll shoot this plasma beam at him. So you'll see there's a ton of plasma beams flying out right now, right? I, don't, I can't get too close to give you too good of a look at it. But what happened essentially uh, when I hit the replay is that I shot out my plasma beam. Don't worry about the saw blade or the, the spitter timer. The, 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 they're not doing anything. All I was doing was I was wanting that, that homing plasma beam to get as close as possible to the boss. And then once it, the, the homing plasma beam saw him, it ran at the boss. And the boss, whenever you fire um, projectiles at him, something like a, like a plasma beam, when the boss gets hit by it, he actually responds by firing off his own plasma beams back at you. So this can work with a, a couple of spells. An example would be an Omega Saw Blade. An Omega Saw Blade is a, is a really popular one uh, for this trick, but it's very dangerous as well because Omega Saw Blade... Doo -doo 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 -doo, where are you? Uh, Omega Saw Blade... Right there. Uh, Omega Saw Blade, you shoot it out and it boomerangs back and it hits you in the face, right? And it does tons of damage. So what people do is they put a little bit of ambrosia on themselves and they shoot that Omega Saw Blade. You have to make contact with that boss. You hit him with it and then and then it boomerangs back at you. So you'll have ambrosia on you and it should keep you safe. That boss will see that happen and respond by shooting off like 50 of his own Omega Saw Blades, which will all boomerang back and hit the boss in the face, uh, essentially killing himself, similar to how this plasma beam, he shot off a ton of these plasma beams, which which plasma beam is dangerous to the player, right? Like when I, when I fire this, if I walk into that plasma beam, it hurts me. So the boss fired off like 50 of his own plasma beams and then stepped into him and killed himself which is how I, I got him so so easily killed. And then we get to look at look at the resources that he dropped, which uh, this wand right here is actually really good for us. 19 capacity, non-shuffle. Mana charge normally would be like, oh shit, this is terrible. But remember, we have an add mana, so mana charge really isn't re that relevant to us. We're all about capacity, non-shuffle, and low, low timers. So this is really good for us. Uh, also, another thing to keep in mind about that boss, if, you do, if you're gonna kill him the old fashioned way, and not like that gimmicky cheesy way that I just did there where I made him kill himself. Uh, the way that boss works is when you hit him with something, when you hit him with damage, uh, the boss has its own iframe. So he'll go invincible for a bit. So you want to hit him with like a single projectile with as much damage as you can get on that projectile. And that's, that's how you take that boss down. So you actually see a lot of people use a bouncing burst and they'll attach like thousands of damage to it and they shoot it at the boss and that's how you one tap them. The downfall, the, 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 the kind of builds that don't work on this boss is if you had a spark trigger, arrow trigger, any kind of, you know, something where you're delivering a payload and, and you're shooting it at the boss and inside, of the, inside the payload you had just thousands of damage. That is a very bad thing because what's going to happen is whenever you go to deliver the payload, the spark trigger or whatever is, is delivering the payload is going to hit the boss the boss will take like two or three damage because the, the, the thing delivering the payload usually does low damage. In this case, the spitter bolt timer does eight damage. The iframes will kick in for the boss and he'll absorb all the damage from the payload. So you will do barely any damage. The boss will laugh at you. That is why a lot of people tend to have uh, problems with this boss. And actually when the boss was first added, we had trouble with them for a couple of days really trying to get down how the heck that boss worked. Because we were shooting off wands that had thousands of damage. But the problem was most of these, these thousands of damage uh, build wands, these, these high DPS wands, are usually built around payload delivery. And if your payload, if you're delivering a payload, he's just gonna have iframes by the time that the, the payload hits him. So single projectile, tons of damage. That's the the most legit way to kill him. Like I guess the, the way that the, the Noita gods intended for him to die. And yeah, so the ping pong lumi will not work on him in that case. I mean you could you could hit him for some damage, but you would be hitting him for very low damage. Because think about it. You're shooting tons of these luminous drills, yeah. You're you're firing them off. But he, once he gets hit, hit by one of them, he'll accept probably like the 10 damage. Then his iframes kick in. So yeah, you could do 10 damage to him like every, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds or something, which is going to be like a joke. You got you to gotta think, gotta think differently. Either make the boss kill himself or make sure that that one projectile that hits him pumps some serious damage. 
but we're talking like single spark bolt. If you're shooting one spark bolt at him, make sure that spark bolt is carrying like a thousand plus of damage so that he can hit him really hard. Um, zero, zero Vith, thanks for the follow, man. I appreciate the love. Uh, also, a uh, side note, Matosade, the spell right here is uh, the key to farming infinite hearts. Um, and uh, but we we I have a video on the YouTube channel about that, so I feel uh, I feel like most people probably don't need that rant anyways. But if you're interested, it is on the YouTube channel. It's actually some of the latest videos that I posted that are just talking about how to farm hearts using uh, Matosade. And uh, there's actually a video I posted recently where uh, the build got you like uh, you could get like 3,000 health in a matter of like a minute or two. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Macros want some more bro Brotato. I had a good time playing Brotato yesterday. I think that I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what comes with that game. Could be cool. It was nice that they actually had a juicy demo. There's that eye that we found earlier. Remember I told you there's one on the surface? That's the surface one. It is always there, and we're going to need that for uh, later on. So below me right here is the Alchemy Lab. And you can see there's polymorphine. There's all kinds of deadly shit. So what we're doing is we're just walking across the top of it. So that uh, instead of instead of traveling inside the lab, let's just walk across the top. And then we just drop into the boss room. So once you see that you no longer can see the Alchemy Lab, you're you're likely over the boss room. You can sometimes go too far, so you have to backtrack a little bit. Now this boss right here is uh, is a little scary. So I'll do my best to talk through this boss, but uh, hopefully I don't talk so much that I get myself killed. Because uh, while I have explosion immunity, which is nice, uh, I'll, he can do electric damage, and he just in general can be a pretty dangerous dude. So this guy right here is going to have a shield that he spawns around him. And... Um, it's, it's very weird because he puts his purple shield around himself, but actually uh, his hitbox can kind of stick out uh, a little bit of the purple shield. It's probably the best way to say it. So meaning there's some angles that you can shoot and the shield will just absorb your shots and he'll, he'll shoot off a projectile back at you. And there's some angles where you can actually hit his hitbox even though his shield is up. It's really tricky, but basically the perfect angle for the luminous, uh, for the, the the ping pong luminous, is directly above him. We should be able to hit the hitbox without uh, his shield just completely absorbing our shots. But I'll show a a shot from the side as well. <laughs> Darium, Darium says they're completely predictable shots that you can avoid with your eyes closed. Sometimes things go wrong. All right. So here he is, he does not have a shield up right now, and the way he shoots is he has like this delayed shot thing that he does. So you gotta be careful. So what I tend to do is I make a, I make circles around him, and, and that's how I can, I usually try to, oops, try to avoid most of his shots. But anyways, let's go ahead and get his shield, uh, his shield up so he can, oh, there he goes, shield's up. So I'm gonna shoot from directly above, or at least try to shoot from directly above him. Where is he? Oh. All right, let's get below him real fast. We need to, We don't want him uh, roaming out on the surface. It's a pain once he's out of this area to deal with him. So let's drop him back down. I kind of goofed around with him for a bit trying to show stuff. Hello, where are you? All right, so we should take a couple shots at him. Hello, get down here. Oh, there he is. He's angry. Where are you? All right, so there's that shield. So I shoot from below. You see it's not really doing much. We can shoot from below him like all day. I'll just absorb that shit. Oh, that was a little close. All right, so now we're gonna try to shoot from be from below or above him. I mean, see from above his head. You see, you see his health bar just get like obliterated. That's what I was talking about. That that weird angle where like you know his shield will absorb from most of the other sides, but directly above, it was actually getting in good hits. Uh, okay, so we got three free spots. I will take the Tau, the Alpha, and the Wand Refresh. Zeta is the, the most annoying of the group anyways. Uh, also, another thing to be uh, keep in mind is that there are enemies that spawn on this edge. And sometimes Polymorphine will, will literally be pouring into the boss arena, depending on the formation over there. Um, is there anything else I should remember on that, that boss fight there that... Uh, that I, I miss. I mean, there, there's there's lots of interesting things about that boss. And there's tons of ways to kill him. But uh, I, I just wanted you to be aware of, you know, see some of his attacks, how you should dodge him. One of the things that I see people mess up with the most is that whenever they, um, 
whenever they they are running from the boss, right? Like so, the boss sees you is shooting, about to shoot a shot at you. Well, the boss shoots a shot in such a way that it's delayed. Like the boss sees you, charges up an attack, and goes boom, and then hits the spot. Well, whenever the guy's charging the attack, I've seen people dodge and then dodge back where they just were. Well, the problem with that is the boss is actually shooting. He's like charging a shot at you here. So say the boss is charging a shot and I dodge this way and then the shot goes off and I dodge back. It's like you jumped out of the way and then back into the shot. So that's why I said make circles around the boss because the boss shot uh, won't it won't be so fast that you can make a full circle and then it hits you. But as long as you're moving and you're not going right back to where you just stepped, you're unlikely to, to accidentally step into one of your... You just don't want to walk in your old path, if that makes sense. You want to move in a in a in a circle. Don't go this way, that way. That that's where you see people messed up. Dodge to the right, dodge to the left. Well, then you're gonna dodge right back into a shot he just was was taking at you. Uh, all the alchemist projectiles can be affected by projectile repulsion. Uh, you can shoot inside the shield depending on timing. QZ said. So there you go. There are there are a lot of tricks to this boss. Uh, and that, again, I just showed you the ping pong loomy one. There are some really interesting ones that uh, can really mess them up. But yeah, so just just understand that uh, the way his shield works is one of the scariest things. This right here, I think this is one. Um, I always thought it pointed to the gold room that's located beneath the lava, but I think Latali was saying that this was an unfinished quest symbol, and I was like, oh, is it? I, I thought it was letting you know that like something that says dollar bill sign has like an arrow. I was like, there must be pointing to that gold room that's down in hell. But I said no, I think it's an unfinished quest or something. Nacy says, so yeah, you almost died twice that boss fight. How so? Wasn't too bad. Wasn't too scary. We were in control. Slurp, slurp, slurp. You dodge neutralizing mage shots by, by a couple of uh, pixels twice. Oh, 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 yeah. Those were those were pretty scary, actually. I thought you were referring to the boss's shots. Yeah, those damn mages, whenever they, they hit that shit, would have been annoying. So. But don't forget, I also had Polyjuice on me. Worst case scenario, you uh, you would have seen me been like Ambrosia. Maybe try to... Uh, uh, not Polyjuice, Telejuice. And I would have I would have teleported away, trying to get somewhere safe. What's up, Vio? All right, so, so far, three bosses down, right? Three bosses down. Um, we're going to go, be killing 12 bosses total, so nine bosses remain. That includes that includes the final boss. We still have this right here, which is a healing hut where you drop it and it actually heals you. Uh, we'll probably be using that soon because we already have infinite heals anyways. Time for some black holes. True, we do need black holes. Actually... That's that's pretty annoying. The fact that I don't have black holes already. Hmm. We could go check. There was the alchemist, bridge boss, and pyramid boss. The big spider guy. So I was thinking, at this point we're looking pretty decent, right? And to the right of the pyramid is this area called the Overgrown Caverns. I kind of want to just do a quick glimpse. This this is an area with really high tier wands and stuff. So I figured since we're looking okay, we have explosion immunity. Let's do a quick glance. Um, I guess we can grab this. It's not really necessary at this point to grab more orbs. We're probably just making the final boss deadlier than we need to. One or two is good to go, but past that it gets a little silly. Uh, there's from our sun quest in the past. Alright. This is the overgrown caverns down here. This can be a pretty dangerous area, so you gotta be careful. In fact, there can be like ukos and mages and crap that spawn on the edges of it. So, uh, oh, did you see some black holes instantly? <laughs> that was like the whole reason we were coming in here. Alright, uh, sweet. Let's back up because there's some deadly enemies. Paid actors. Don't be jealous of my skill. Uh, I do want to glance to see. I thought there was another wand I saw over here. I guess it was just that. 
right there. So this zone, uh, think of it as like the fungal zone in the second area, except for it's like a, a later version of it. The enemies are deadlier than the first fungal zone that you normally would find. And the wands though are much, be much better. Uh, a positive thing about this zone is that there are no natural spawning poly mages or, or ukos and stuff like that. So that makes this area kind of cool in a, a nice zone to go to once you feel like you're decently strong whenever you're looking for, for good loots. I mean, there are wands and heart formations everywhere. Tons of flasks. I mean, we already have a healing bolt. This is just a great place. If you're having a run and you're missing some resources, this is one of the, my, my favorite places to go to. Dep depending on what you're missing, remember, not all resources can be found in, uh, in this zone uh, because some things like, uh, for example, um, the platform spells. Platform spells are, are what people use to do the 34 uh, or boss. You need you need these uh, these right here. Some in wall, some in platform. Um, you, I mean, I guess you could use other strategies too, but that's the strategy that I tend to use. And this area is not any good for finding it. You would, if you got it in that area, it'd be because you got it from a chest, which would be insanely lucky. Uh, it doesn't spawn naturally on a wand because it can't spawn naturally on a wand. It has to spawn as an individual spell. So for those, usually you go to uh, the Holy Mountains and stuff like that. I just, uh, yeah, 34 and more. <laughs> true, Nisi, true. But uh, yeah, so I figured just, just little things like that I'd point out. Uh, but that's not really, that doesn't matter to our, doesn't really pertain to our all boss run today. We got our black hole. And the reason that we wanted the black hole is because we have infinite spells now. We have, remember the alpha? Cast a copy of the first spell on your wand. Tau copies the two following spells uh, in the wand when cast, and we have a wand refresh. All three of these, hell, even the, the the fee that we found earlier, all of these allow us to shoot off infinite black holes, even if it's out of charges. It has nothing to do with unlimited spells. Unlimited spells uh, doesn't work on black holes, so you have to come up with another method, which is what we have here. Was it not worth going for the uh, the eye uh, of... Uh, the Eye of Three Eyes while you're down there. The Eye of Three Eyes. Oh, you're talking about um, the Mecha Komi dude? It may have been worth it. In fact, I'm kind of regretting not grabbing that... Uh, not grabbing the, the one eye on uh, that, that allows us to fight the Forgotten boss. But at the same time, I, I, I mean, I don't know what I... I could, I could give up the Healing Hut, I guess. But we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Uh, I'll, we'll make our, our way around. I'm not too worried. You may have to do a bit of backtracking, which that part's kind of annoying, but outside of that, we're going to be fine. Okay. So, might as well grab the heal now. And then this wand here uh, is going to become our... <laughs> Some quads on this thing too. It'll become our damage wand, I believe. Hold up. Okay. Scared me. I heard that and I was like, what the heck is that? Alright, so now. This is our new main wand. Oops, and we're gonna build it in such a way that we can kill the dragon. So we have a couple options. We could build a, uh, a freeze tentacle wand like this. This is considered a frozen melee. It freezes and melees the boss at the same time. That will uh, insta-kill the dragon. If, it, if something lives to the freeze melee, it means it survived with like 1 HP. The only thing to ever worry about. Uh, okay, Luminous Drill goes here. Double trigger. Oh, okay, we gotta go grab some of those filler spells that we left laying around. Please hold. I really wish you guys could see this guy right now. He is drenched in sweat. You. Who dis? Black Wraith with the Prime 11 month there. Black Wraith, appreciate the sweaty loving man. 11 months he's been supporting the channel. 
Thank you, thank you, and thank you, chat, for, for appreciating the hell out of Black Wraith. Hmm. Is there any more? There's spitter bolts right there. Um, put that up. So we're just building a, a, a decent sized payload here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven because this is a double trigger. How does this look? Actually, too much mana being spent. Too much mana. All right, uh, what if we remove that? Build too much mana. Let's go with a quad. One, two, three, four. Two. Double, one, two, and two, a triple. Let's see. Cost two. Cost two, that's four mana. Oops. Uh, oh, wait. No, this can be another double. I forgot. This is a double trigger. Still too much mana being spent here. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Let's just go with this and four spells. Let's see how that does. I want it to be infinite so I can just kind of spam it up in here. Nope, I gotta have five spells because it's a double trigger. We're actually still losing a little bit of mana here. Annoying. Yeah, there were some spark bolts that I left back earlier. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Trying to decide on the build here. Okay, we, we were gonna... We'll leave these here. One thing I did want to show... Uh, so, for using black holes, I feel like most people get the alpha and all that. That's not anything too complicated. Come on, where is it? So... Black hole... Used with alpha. Actually, first let's fire off the black holes so that there's zero charges. Audio is still messed up. I keep saying I'm going to fix that, fix that, and I keep forgetting. So zero charges. If you used like an alpha, alpha on a black hole, uh, alpha casts a copy of the first spell in your wand. So we put the the black hole first. The alpha copies it. Very easy. Nothing too complicated. Uh, now the wand refresh. This is where things get a little confusing to people. Instead of alpha. They don't know how to use the wand refresh to cast infinite spells. So to use the wand refresh, you need to have a... Let me go ahead and do a restart. That The audio is really annoying me. So to use the wand refresh to cast infinite spells, you need to have at least one charge on whatever thing you're trying to infinitely cast. So in this case, we have zero charges on this black hole. So let's grab one that had a, had a couple charges there. There you go. Black hole here. This one has three charges, right? We want to, if we cast it like this, it uses up one of the charges. We want to cast both of these at the same time. So a double, triple, quad, any of those work. Any of those work because it's casting both the black hole and the wand refresh at the same time. So when I shoot it, you'll see that uh, it's not using any of the charges. See, still two, no problem, ranting. <laughs> Hey, I got to make sure people know how to use the wand refresh. Some people get confused on that. That's going to be our wand for digging for now. In fact, I'll go ahead and put a heal after it since... Uh, just to take up some space. That there. This here. So I'm going to show you the, uh, the freeze tentacle in action on this uh, next boss, I think. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. So I'll use the freeze tentacle on these guys. You can see that the freeze tentacle does insta kill most enemies uh, in this level. Oops, just gotta hit them. Things that are not machines, essentially machines and ghosts. Mach machines and ghosts do not get one shot by the freeze tentacle. But outside of that, most things are very vulnerable and susceptible to the the, the freeze melee. So this is one of those easy to oh god, easy to create builds. That guy, I think, is immune to it, isn't he? 
I, I, I think this is one of the guys that's immune to it, yeah. Oh no, he is, he is, he is not immune to it. One of those guys, uh, I forget which mage it is, he is immune to the freeze melee. Uh, we don't have to worry about what he was shooting off because it was explosion stuff. And we are explosion immune. Yeah, we did pass up a speed up earlier. Yeah, so yeah, because we're using a quad, we are casting black. It does the one refresh makes it cast twice, but in this case, it doesn't matter. It still doesn't use a charge. You could use a double or a triple. E any of those work there. Uh, okay, freeze melee. This guy. So watch. Boop. I just like showing this off because I feel like some people get in a, a rough situation and they make it to the jungle, and they don't realize that if they come across a freeze, uh, they could they could easily get by by freezing enemies. And if you don't have a tentacle, you can just kick them with your own melee. You know, your, your kick, like this, rather than uh, using the, the tentacle. Ow. Freeze melees for days. Ooh, a digging blast. Hold up. I'd like to, to have that digging blast. Uh, swap the uh, digging blast with one of the spitter timers. Set that up. The reason that's kind of nice to have is because uh, Digging Blast, while it doesn't do damage, it uh, it helps the the shots dig. Actually not digging that well. Oh, we have an Orbiting Arc on there. I was like, why is it not digging? Hold on, we gotta get rid of the Orbiting Arc. Which I didn't really need the damage from the or Orbiting Arc right now anyways. You gotta watch. Certain sp uh, certain modifiers can interact in such a way that they mess with uh, like digging and stuff on your wand. And now our main wand digs very well. There's a heart, and uh, we could do the heart mage trick, but I feel like in like every one of my videos, I do the heart mage trick for these long runs. So this run, we will not do the heart mage trick. Uh, it, it'll add some spice to the all, bo all boss run too, because if I'm going into boss fights without, you know, like 4,000 HP, I think maybe it'd be a little, a little more scary, right? Put some fear in our hearts. Uh, you're getting uh, double the cast delay of the quad uh, with a double spell. That is true. That is true. If we use something without a, such a large cast delay, uh, like like uh, Durium is saying there. Let me show you. So if you if you look at the black hole that I'm shooting, you can see the coloring on it is kind of like uh, it's like dark, or it maybe maybe light is the way to say it. It's like it's, it's extreme colored version of the black hole. So there's a see this is because it's two black holes if you use something that's uh, just a double cast you'll see that it looks like a single black hole see that that's because with wand refresh if you have a very large multicast it actually will cast a black hole loop around and cast a black hole again uh, it's it's really weird shit that's wand refresh comes with some weird shit like that but the thing that uh, Durham was uh, was the reason he was wanting to point that out is because if you cast a black hole twice you're getting the cast delay twice as well so it means when I shoot the time in between to shoot again is going to be longer because we cast it twice. But if you have it, if you're just casting it one time, you can cast a little more rapidly uh, to to not have to worry about that massive cast delay. We're getting his wand. Oh yeah, let's go. Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> Where am I? Who am I? Where did I leave that sucker? It was right there. There we go. Off. Quant says, any tips for 20 minutes till dawn? I'm still a noob learning my ways through 20 minutes till dawn, so I have to hold off on that one. Right he but I have been way. enjoying my time in 20 minutes till dawn. Definitely a game worth to, worth checking out. Worth the like three bucks or whatever that it costs. It's, it's, it's awesome. Hey, Dr. Troll. Dr. Troll. Thank you for the prime two monthers. Says best noita streamer. Love watching while training for Monster Hunter Sunbreak. Hey, uh, good luck in the Monster Hunter. Good good luck Monster Hunting. <laughs> uh, and Doctor Troll, thank you for the two months. Deaf man says cock and balls torture. Hi YouTube. Wait what? Excuse me. What? Uh, be afraid of deaf man.
<laughs> Tip just farm meta progression. It does feel like that a bit. I don't like that part so much. Yeah, I'm excited. We finally got some uh, some games on my... Ooh, this is huge for all boss run. Weakening curse explosions. Fuck. We're going we're gonna to pop off with that thing. Um, but yeah, I, I like... Uh, 20 minutes till dawn. I've been enjoying playing that. Uh, Dome Keeper. I'm excited to see the full release for that. The demo on Steam is free and I've been I've been loving it. And can't wait for it to come out. And then Brotato. Had a good time with that yesterday as well, so... There's some good stuff on the horizon for the, the, the gamer life. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's bring this this back to the mountain real quick. It's actually pretty dangerous to drop down that wand specifically. If you're smart, you should drop down like the black hole wand. Because if an enemy picks up my freeze tentacle wand and then hits me with it, we'd have a fucking problem. I could insta-die that shit. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so this weakening curse is massive. Massive. Uh, I guess we're gonna let go of electric arc. Electric arc, I like it a lot, but it's it's just one of those. It's like my personal favorite, not because it's necessarily like the best thing ever. I just enjoy using it. But yeah, this this weakening curse. The reason it's a big deal is um, most bosses, if they if explosions don't hurt them much, it's not because they're immune to explosions. It's because they are 100% resistant to an explosion. So if you if you're, you have like, you know, 10,000 explosion damage, and something's 100% resistant to explosion damage, just absorb the whole explosion, does zero damage. But if you hit them with the weakening curse, they're no longer 100%, they're now 75% resistant to explosion. So 25% comes through, means the boss becomes vulnerable. Most bosses actually don't have that high of health pool. They're like, you know, you look at their health pools, it'll be like a thousand HP, which is really not that much. Uh, because you're bla you're shooting for like, you know, thousands of damage all the time. So to make them vulnerable to any damage type usually is like a death sentence to, to every boss. Because you usually have enough damage. You just gotta just gotta get rid of the resistances. Um Two Plank says, uh, I'm brand new to Noita. Can you explain why I had a wand with an electric something? Wait, with an electric something that ended up killing me while swimming in water. Why did it delay rather than killing me the moment I hit the water? I can show you actually two planks. Uh, let's let's get a little bit risky here. A little risky frisky. So, if we put electricity on anything, it doesn't matter. It's just anything, anything electricity. You'll actually see the wand begins to spark. I don't know how well you can see that. In fact, let me remove the other stuff so you have a clearer visual here. Um, there, you can see the sparking on the end of the wand. Now, if you get that in water, you'll see that it actually begins to conduct. You see that, that buildup? So you have, if you ever see that, you have like one second to get out of there. Otherwise, it's, the electricity starts to go off and you'll start getting electrocuted. Uh, if you can hold your wand above water, you can usually keep it from electrocuting you. But in general, just don't fuck around near water whenever you have electricity on your wand, unless you're electric immune. So don't go doing what I'm doing because, you know, one slip up and you actually will insta-die. Because uh, if you survive electricity in water and you are not immune to it, it's out of pure luck. Because electricity in water can hit for thousands of damage, uh, no problem. In fact, Solar just lost a run just the other day uh, because of an electric stone in water that he accidentally dipped his feet in and it electrocuted his toes. And once it electrocutes you, it, you can't move, you're paralyzed. So he fell deep into the water and then you just, it just pulses and kills you. Dunk, please, my bet. What? Your bet? Oh, <laughs> please don't play with fire. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to scare you. Don't mean to scare you. Hey, where'd the tentacle go? Did I throw it on the ground? I did. I threw it on the ground right there. You fool. If you're getting rid of electric arc, put it on a trash wand and uh, throw it in the water for a demo. Uh, so if you if you have electricity on a wand and you toss it in there, uh, the wand shouldn't conduct still. Like it'll... Where'd that electric arc go? So electric arc on the wand and we drop it in water. 
So it doesn't conduct until you pick it up. This is where a lot of newcomers get fucked over because what'll happen is they'll go down in the water and they'll pick up the wand and then they'll pull out the wand and then that's when they get electrocuted and they die. Because it doesn't, it doesn't, there's nothing that really gives away that there's electricity on it until you have it. Actually, this wand has double electricity on it if you look at it. So, it is, it is very electric. We wouldn't even need the electric arc for this thing to have some electricity on it. Because the always cast is electric as well. <laughs> Chickens is just saying, don't give me a heart attack. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I won't. I'll stay away from the water. You're freaking me out, man. Because uh, if you're curious why some people are freaking out, it's because they have that Noita PTSD. Uh, every newcomer has gotten got. Uh, at some, or Every Noita player, not even just necessarily a newcomer. Every Noita player, when they were a newcomer, has gotten got by that damn electricity in the water. Uh, where did I put that black hole wand again, chat? Oh, there it is. Never mind. Found it. All right, so we are moving on to boss number four. So this this is actually an egg, if you look at it. This is the dragon's egg. And the way the dragon works is, there's like a center point right about, uh, right about here, somewhere in this general range. And when the player gets a certain distance from that center point, it will spawn in the boss. And uh, and once the boss spawns in, he's the dragon's gonna come at you, and he's gonna be thirsty for blood. What the? <sighs> Stay out of this. Uh, what I missed their stack. I got one shot uh, from 2,000 HP yesterday because I had a tele wand out by accident and tried to shoot the ground out of a uh, a pool of water with an uko stone. Yeah, 2,000 HP. Yeah, I, I believe you, stack. I believe you. Uh, that that electric damage is no joke. Uh, so what we're doing is we're, we're digging towards the center point of the egg. I'm trying to, really I'm clearing a lot of area. Right Har Harmonious, thank you for the four month there. I do appreciate the love. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate the support. So the center point, it's open. Obviously I can walk this way. But the reason I want to show this is that approaching this dragon from the side is the safest way. You can actually dig from above and it's much more dangerous because you only have to dig in a little bit and the boss will spawn and he actually will kind of lunge out of the egg it's it's much scarier uh but if you approach it from the side he doesn't lunge as much and if you're ever nervous you can put a little bit of ambrosia on yourself because he does do some serious damage now this wand we could kill him with this wand pretty easily but i want to show um i want to show the freeze melee uh which is right here the freeze tentacle this is uh this boss hates frozen melee attacks so, boom, there you go. Insta killed them on spawn. Again, though, our main wand also would have done really well against this boss. We just would have, we would have backed up. The boss would have spawned, and you start backpedaling, and you just shoot at him while you're backpedaling. Uh, with with damage like this, you'll you'll tear through him pretty quick. Uh, but be careful, be careful, because you need you need damage. Wow, look at this monster. What the fuck? Um, the ducks, not super interested in the ducks. Uh, don't get so excited about the ducks, damn it. <laughs> the duckies! Uh, yeah, good thing I have you guys muted so you can't quack it up. But, what we have here, another weakening curse explosions, but we already have the one. You, stacking them is pointless. Uh, stacking them is not going to give us any benefit. Uh, however, you can benefit from... Stacking, let me show you. Where are you? Weakening curses. Do, 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 do. My eyes are failing me. There they are. So you can stack the venomous curse, but these other ones, uh, like the, the weakening curse, projectiles, explosives, melee, electric, you don't stack those. You just need one of them if you're looking to do that damage uh, type. Uh, all right. Was there a blessed quack in there? There was. Miksu didn't even get to hear it. Poor Miksu. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the freeze tentacle behind. There really isn't much use for it um, outside of uh, this boss. So this boss was boss number four for us to kill, right? 
And then there's the pyramid boss that we killed earlier. That The freeze melee works on that guy as well. I don't think there's any others that we're going to be fighting that are vulnerable to the freeze melee. The final boss is vulnerable to it uh, up until like two orbs or something. But we're not going to be using that anyways. Uh, so let's swap that out. All right, let's get moving. If you're melee immune when you fight that, that dragon, it makes it way, way safer. Melee immune is like the best because the boss, whenever he tries to, he can insta kill you for thousands of damage whenever that dra the dragon, I should have showed you and let, let him lunge at me so you can see it's pretty scary. But if he makes contact, it will do thousands of damage. All like in a moment. So be very, very careful. Uh, blue Glimmer. Kind of tempting. Acceleration we could use for the black holes. Hmm. Let's see. Let's dig our way up real quick. Is it fungal right above us? No, it's not. Dig up. There's another heart. Yeah, he moves like a worm. Exactly. He moves like a worm. But the worms, you know how they, they lunge at you. <laughs> they all just... Whew. Sometimes, sometimes they're just chilling, doing their thing. And other times they just go... They just dive at you. Be pretty scary. Uh, anyways, let's uh, move over to our new wand here. Sorry, ducks. I don't need you anymore. If you ever convert over, like, um,. Blood to something of interest, or maybe you have uh, vampirism. You can actually use the ducks to farm uh, a good amount of blood, because whenever they they expire or whatever, there's blood. And in fact, I think if we put the Nala on that, um, you can spawn a good amount of blood that way too. I guess it's it's just worth pointing that out because some people like to use vampirism. Some people do vampirism builds, and so you could just farm that blood. Uh, anyways, we don't need that right now. I'm going to go grab one of those explosives that I left earlier, but swap over to this. Quad one, two, three, four, and the double trigger, so it makes it five. Oh, it's ugly. What the hell? Oh, the recharge time. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess we put uh, the double here and oil. Oil has a recharge reduction as well. I don't know if I want to deal with the oil everywhere, though. Better. Should do for now. I'm going to go ahead and heal myself up real quick. Alpha cap copies the last spell on the wand. And then... I think this should work. Let's see. Nope, that's not it. Uh... Oh, first spell. Gamma is the last spell. Yeah. There we go. Hello? There we go. So essentially what we're doing is we're teleporting in front of our heels as we shoot them. Ooh, that's a good idea there, stack shards. I like that idea a lot. Very good idea. Give you one second. Where did I put the box at? Oh, it's down there. Very, very, very good idea. Uh, okay, so we don't need these anymore. Set that up. I don't know if I'm using the quad, whatever. Uh, what Stack was suggesting is, uh, especially because we're explosion immune, we could bust out the large explosive box. 
we have unlimited spells. So normally the large explosive box only has a certain amount of shots. But with unlimited spells, we good. So if you shoot just the explosive box like this, it'll like just spawn in the box. But uh, what, what you can do is you put in something like a digging blast. So that whenever you shoot it, it'll like, uh, well, you can, usually you can get them to detonate. Every once in a while it doesn't detonate. The more the more stuff to, to, to disturb the box, the more likely it is to detonate off of it. Uh, so something like this, and you'd put like a, a weakening curse on the trigger. So you hit an enemy with it, hits them with a weakening curse, explosion will just fuck them up. It's actually really good damage too. Um, 800 explosion damage. Can't complain about that. Very solid build. Oh yeah, Nala. Psh. We don't even need that. I wasn't even thinking about that. Good call. Durium? Wasn't even thinking. But I guess it's good to know though the other, because Nala is one of those that you don't really get that often. Not exactly the most common spell to get your hands on. Nala is, Nala is the perfect one for it, because it, it actually guarantees it. Uh, but yeah, Digging Blast works if you don't have something like a Nala. Most of the time it will it will destroy the box. at Basically the box is spawning in, and then it's getting hit by the Digging Blast, causing it to detonate. Without that, you just spawn it in, and it'll just kind of sit there. And you have to shoot another shot at it to, to detonate it or whatever. Uh, Alright, but the goal is to keep getting more Ad Manas. Keep stacking that shit. Uh, we shouldn't need that. Put this up. So does that create uh, trig blood money? I believe the large explosive boxes do, right? Well, I mean, let me let me check this out to be certain. Let's be a hundred percent on this one. Where are you, Nala? Again? I just threw it all, everything around. There we go. Let's go murder something. We got some murdering to do here. Yeah, there's the the blood money Whoop. lots and lots of blood money so the reason it's safe to use for me because I have explosion immunity otherwise this could be very deadly something that you gotta watch the fuck out for but we're safe blood money for days I can't remember, was there there was something else I was carrying back there, wasn't there? What did I leave behind? Gotta go back and grab it. Ow. Oh, what the hell happened here? I can't remember what I was casting earlier that messed with that. Uh, acceleration. Oh, that was it. That was it. Acceleration. So I was wanting to leave this here. Oh my gosh, there are a lot of boxes here. Are they stuck in the wall? Um, Refium says, Are hearts guaranteed to spawn in a zone? It cleared the first two zones with no hearts. That is possible. That's very unlucky that you got no hearts, but it is possible. Um... Hearts are not, like, scattered through your world. Instead, hearts are assigned to formations. Meaning, like, the, the game loads in chunks. Like, it, 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 picture it. I always tell people, picture, like, a chessboard, right? The chunks, each each square is pre-designed. And whenever it's, uh, it, it'll randomly select a formation to put into each square to create the world, uh, like, the, the zone that you're in. And whenever it spawns in uh, one of these chunks... If it is a chunk that has a, a, a potential heart spawn in it, that's when you have a chance for one to spawn. Uh, if you type exclamation mark formation, I think, in the chat, it's on the Noita Wiki. We have it. If somebody wants to link it, feel free. But uh, there's actually a, a list. There, there you go. Health off. Got it. There, there's the link right there. Uh, that actually shows a, a whole list for every zone, the formations that can spawn a heart. So if you ever don't get a heart, it's because it didn't, like when it was building the world, it was piecing together all the blocks to build your, your zone. It just never chose a, a formation that, that could spawn a heart. It's very unlucky. Or the ones the ones that it did choose, uh, just you got unlucky. And it, there's anytime it, you see a formation that is a heart formation, means like a heart can spawn in that, it only has a 30% chance of spawning a heart. Got a 40% chance of spawning a chest and a 0% chance, or I mean a 30% chance of spawning nothing. 
Not quite. Uh, Alright. Put all this stuff up. Where's that digging blast? There it goes here. Alright. Let's go grab that acceleration. Matter's changing up his loots. He's re-looting up. Uh, I may need you to kind of direct me, Chad, if I get lost here. Which seems... Oh, there's a heart there. I saw that. One of the advantages to putting a light on your travel wand. You'll see when you're telling around, sometimes you get a glimpse of like stuff through a wall. See like, see how I can see on the other side of this wall just, just for a moment. There it is. Um, I, you can use that sometimes to see hearts and stuff if you're paying attention, which I'm not always paying attention, but usually usually the chat is, and they'll be like, hey, you missed a heart. Shouldn't you move your uh, black hole wand to a bigger capacity wand for a black hole spell storage wand? You could, yeah, I, I could do that. Um, the reason I was using the one that I was using Okay, this damn poison's getting annoying. Uh, is because it does have a, a sick monopole. Where, where the hell? No, oh, I went way too far over here, didn't I? I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, this hut. I kinda don't really want it anymore. The healing hut. Don't need it. Usually in runs, it can be helpful to hold on to that, but where this run, it, it was not necessary. Was it on the left side? That was the wand, go above? Oh shit, I passed it. Okay, chat says I passed it. Where's my baby? Not this one. Hmm, check the image. Oh shit! Yes, this can happen. This can actually happen. Look at that. This is like a, a series of like formations. Actually, I don't know this formation, why that heart is there. This formation, yes. This formation, yes. This formation, I kind of recognize. That one I don't recognize super well. Um, but yeah, sometimes, sometimes there's just heart hearts everywhere. Uh, directly under the hut. Oh, thank you, thank you. Directly under the hut that I just spawned. Uh, where is that hut that I just spawned? I'm already lost. Oh, this one right here. Psh, thank you. Appreciate you. I'd have been wandering around aimlessly forever. I get to ranting and I forget where I put my stuff. Uh, wait, where did I place the black hole wand? There it was. Whoop. So this one's got good mana on it, which is the reason I've been using it. The acceleration there. And Glimmer, we'll hold on to the Glimmer, just in case. Just in case. Facts. Alright, that's something, I guess. Freeze up at least one spot. Try to have at least one free spot at all times. Otherwise, you will regret it. Lava to blood. Ah, eh, there's no reason for us to go to hell, so... Shouldn't need it. Plus, uh... Well, we did drop our freeze earlier, didn't we? Use glimmer instead of oil. Oil, uh, is reducing recharge. Glimmer reduces cast delay. I mean, oil can do cast delay as well, but we put it inside of a trigger, so it's only doing recharge reduction. Make blue hole. <laughs> you want to use the blue glimmer on the black hole? Oh shit, I forgot it had acceleration. That thing went flying. There you go, we'll build a blue glimmer black hole on. There you go, chat. Woo! Glimmers are weird. Uh, okay, so this boss fight right here is significant because... I think, is this uh, our, yeah, it's our big Steve fight. So, if you're ever afraid and you're, you don't trust your damage, if you have Ambrosia, Ambrosia is the way to stay safe. Be careful though, because he does dig a little bit. When he starts to dig, it can it can cause you to drop down a bit, drying off your, your Ambrosia. But as long as you're standing still, the Ambrosia will stay 
So usually when I'm fighting a guy in a scenario like this, I'll tend to, like, I'll shoot him, and then I'm watching my Ambrosia the whole time. I'm just staring at my Ambrosia, making sure that he dies before my Ambrosia goes out. And if my Ambrosia almost goes out, bring out the Ambrosia again, lube up a bit, nothing too crazy. Uh, nothing of interest here. In fact, let me check the wands before I go doing anything too crazy. Wow, look at that. There's a Nala and a phasing on that. Two pretty rare spells. Piercing is kind of exciting because we could use piercing on our heals and heal up like easy. In fact, let me go ahead and snag that now. All right, let's do a roll. Uh, all right, we can take the oil blood for the fire immunity. I don't think that should be a problem. Kind of annoying going through the cursed rock with it, but whatever. Grab this heal. It's kind of wasteful grabbing that heal, I know, but we have a we have infinite heals up here. So I'd rather just because whenever you grab that heal in the mountain, it does add ten permanent HP. So that's nice to have. And in the next zone, we'll be coming up on our our fifth boss fight. It is boss fight number four, right? Yeah. It'll be number number five. We have to get through this zone first, though. Acid formation right there. Screw that. Keep it back. Don't trust the acid. Swap our guy. Insta kill him before he could even swap. Dead before he knew it. Not fair. Uh, anytime I use Ambrosia, he always takes the stain away with his shots. His shots do not remove the stain. You get, just got to be careful that you're not standing in any other liquid. Because whenever he shoots and stuff, sometimes he can stir up liquid around you. Or whenever he digs, it can move you a little bit. But uh, I'll show you again in the next fight that, you know, the Ambrosia, as long as you're careful with it, you can keep yourself very safe in that in that big Steve fight, that scout fight. Uh, hello? I don't know why I used my Telewan there. Whoop. Shooting out those invisible black holes. Uh, there's a damage plus. I'm trying to think if we even need a damage plus in this run. I mean, I'll grab it, but I, I, honestly, I, we're not really hurting too much for damage. Our boss killers are going to be uh, built around explosion, I think. We'll see. We will see. So, an important thing that uh, I don't really talk about much, but I should point it out more often, is I feel like sometimes people, when they're collecting orbs, they don't realize how easy the orb uh, that's near the vault is to get. It is so easy. All you have to do is just walk along the bottom of the vault until you hit a wall. Okay, that was kind of scary. So you just keep walking along here. Freeze melee, dudes. Just strutting along, don't mind me. Wonder where they got electrocuted from. in there all right so you hit a wall and then once you hit the wall all you have to do is just dig which i have black holes so you just dig through it and when you pop out the other side there's a there's an orb <laughs> that orb is really easy to uh to, to get with any kind of basic digging you know not basic but you know luminous drill black holes that kind of stuff all right so again i'll show you on steve so we put in broge on ourselves, and we're not moving at all Every once in a while, he'll reposition while he's attacking you, and that causes your character to move slightly. Like, and you'll see the percent actually drop whenever your character moves. But you can just sit like this forever, as long as you make sure there's no liquids around you. But if you're near water or some blood, 
His shots are like like exploding in a way that they'll splash water and stuff on your character, which will which will wash off the ambrosia. So you gotta be you gotta be careful of that. And also, whenever you're shooting him, he bleeds bone dust, and that makes you that tends to make you move around slightly. So that's that's another thing that I see players, uh, you know, not realize is going on there. Pirate says definitely beats going through the Luki lair. Yeah, that that easy to snag. You just go through there, grab that, and get the heck out of there. Look at that. That's a third uh, explosive uh, weakening curse. That these this is a good th like we've seen three of them in, in today's daily. Normally though, if you're doing all boss run, seeing like a weakening curse like that is is damn hype. All right. So we have this. If you're curious why the piercing was kind of cool, I'll show you. Um, I don't think we need that, but I'll hold on to it just in case. So piercing on a heal is like easy full heals. Like you get super heals from this bad boy. Uh, but we don't have any charges on this heal. So what we're going to do is alpha cast a copy of the very first spell on your wand. So the first spell on my wand will be the healing bolt. And then you attach the piercing to the alpha because the alpha is pretending to be a heal. And then you can just uh, shoot this off a wall or whatever and just bounce it into yourself. And it's this is going to be very, very helpful to have. Piercing is just is crazy. Like one shot from this and you can get like 300 or 400 HP just by jumping into it in the right way. Piercing is nice. Damn nice. Uh, okay, so these, I didn't really want any of these. In fact, let's farm up the gold so I can re-roll that shit. Gotta be afraid of polymorphine or a freeze melee. Those are two of my nightmares right now. I actually, the other day when we were playing Noita together, I died with 14,000 HP because of fucking freeze melee. I teleported forward right into a freeze guy that froze me near a near a clump of those angry lumps and they all jumped into me and meleeed me at the same time. It was messed up, man. I was not happy about it. I've suffocated in scouts bone dust before. <laughs> that would be that would be a frustrating death for sure. So this guy right here, we're going to try to kill him before he comes around that corner. Aw, I didn't kill him fast enough. Right, you got to watch out for his reflection shots. They are annoying. There's a freeze guy. Stay back. Oh, polymorphine guy. Uh, I think we exploded his corpse. So usually you want to eat his corpse. You will get some poly immunity so that you can... While you have poly immunity, you're you're safe from okay, not safe from his attacks. You're safe from the the polymorphine bubble, like that. Yeah, it it's pretty cool. And uh, th but it's only the corpse of that one polymorphine guy that I killed that does that. The big guy, he does, eating his corpse isn't gonna help at all. It's the little polymorphine mage, little poly mage. And uh, if you if you eat his whole corpse, we only ate like a piece of him because he like exploded from our weapon, uh, from our our wand here, but. Uh, if you eat his whole corpse, you get like two minutes of that uh, immunity. It's pretty cool. Hmm. You also died to a fire guy in the mines. We don't talk about this. All right, this didn't happen. You must have dreamed it. Brass pouch. There's a heart. Yay. We don't have a lot of protection against polymade shots, so I'm a little nervous about them. Keep expecting one to fly in. We've already killed two polymages in this run.
All right. Oh, I forgot to build the egg wand. So this is time to fight this boss right here, but we need our eggs. Let me go back real fast and build up the eggs. Something in the chat was probably saying, hey, you forgot the eggs, you fool. There's a heart mage. If we were looking to do the heart mage trick, but this run, we're going to go without the heart mage trick. Shouldn't be necessary anyways, but it is helpful to do. Good evening, Rubik's. And we're back. Reroll. Extra life. Hey, can't go wrong with an extra life, right? Uh, all right, let's heal ourselves up real fast. Shoot that off the ceiling. Boom, full health. And then put up these things. And the egg trigger. So this egg, we're not putting in anything in the trigger. But just know if you have something you want to put in the trigger, you can. Like you can always, uh, for example, watch this black hole. We throw the egg in the air. We get we could throw it in the air, or you could even um, so you throw the air, you catch it. You could even throw the egg into um, water. That works too, because it doesn't crack whenever it goes in the water. But uh, then we have this egg up in our inventory, and we can just you know throw it out, and it stored that black hole in it. So using that method, you can store heals up there, and you can just I don't know, just be creative, come up with some fun stuff. But uh, in our case, we don't we don't want to do anything creative or crazy right now. We're on an all boss adventure. No time for goofiness. It's all business. You could store nukes in it. This is true. I don't know why you would, Elvinus, but you could. New to playing Noita, as I figured, uh, so I figured I'd start watching streams to figure out what I'm doing. Well, welcome to the community, man. Welcome to the Noita life. Welcome to the best single player game of all time. Noita is actually, it actually is my favorite single player game of all time. I love it. Uh, okay, so this boss is kind of cool. Because it's, uh, what makes it different from other bosses is it's actually like a physics material. Uh, most bosses, you know, you have to shoot them with damage and all that, and you can shoot this boss with damage. However, this boss is also considered a physics material, like, just like this wall is, that you can dig through a wall, you can actually dig into this boss and get him killed that way. So we're going to kill him using the physics uh, material way. We're going to throw three eggs. One, two, so we're just throwing these eggs right here. Three. Third egg will summon the boss, and then we're going to dig the boss till it dies. So shoot the black holes at him. Which the black holes do look weird because we have the glimmer spell on it. I know it's kind of hard for you to see. I probably should have taken it off. Uh, so we're just shooting black holes at them. Come on. Invisible black holes. And after you kill each piece of the boss, you'll see that it... Um, it's the part where you die. There it goes. It'll actually drop a spell for each piece of the boss. Wait, did we get all of them? I think we're missing a piece. Hold on. One, two, three. Heavy shot's cool, yeah, yeah. But where's the other? There should be four. Did I miss a piece? Or did I kill him and just didn't realize it? Hold up. Let's see. Did it drop a spell down here? Oh, there it is. It dropped a spell. So I killed all four. There should be four spells that drop out of them. Um, now, if you kill the boss like I did, which was just using black holes, I was just shooting it at him. Um, the, the bad thing with that, and it's, it's glimmer black holes, that's why you can't really see them very well. But, uh, the bad thing about doing that is on your progress bar, down here where it has the pieces, uh, it actually doesn't credit you that you killed the boss, uh, because you, you didn't really, you didn't kill him, the environment, like, it, it's like an accidental kill, if that makes sense, the environmental kill. Um... That, yeah, so it won't show up here. So if you want to get credit for him on it, you need to kill him the old-fashioned way by shooting him with just some damage. And that guy is a hell of a tank with damage. He, I mean, it's not, it's not impossible to kill or anything like that, but he just he, he soaks up quite a bit of damage, so it's kind of annoying. Which wand is better? I can't decide. They're both infinite casts. Let's see what you got there. What two wands are you working with? Uh, wand number one. Uh... Hmm. Okay. Actually, is that one infinite cast? I don't think that one is. 
Oh, wait, no, you don't. Yeah, it is infinite cast, isn't it? And then, or this one. That one would be better, I think. Well, actually, no, hold up. Well, I'm glad to see Tranch Slam. You understand the concept of, like, you know, you got the wand building down pretty nicely. It's really up to you. Uh, this one has more potential because nine capacity gives you more to work with. This one right here only has six capacity. And while it's more efficient and everything right now, uh, the negative thing is if you want to build more stuff later, this one's the six capacity wants much more limiting. So probably the other one. Probably, probably. Just got to wait and see what resources you get. Uh, so yeah, that was the uh, that was the door boss. And the reason it's called the door boss is because that's actually the door to uh, this area right here. The magical temple, which is a very deadly zone that we are not going to go in. Because there are mages everywhere and stuff. Well, it's right next to the mages den, I should say. So, what, is, what are we on? Boss number, that's boss number five. So we have uh, seven more bosses to kill. Belly mage. Keep going. So there's a lot more that we could uh, explore in this zone, but since we're going for all bosses, we have a lot ahead of us. So I'm not going to go exploring, exploring this whole zone to see what it has for us. No time for that. Oh, that's a polymage. That is a polymage. Hell no. Again, though, you kill that polymage, and then you can eat his corpse afterwards, and you get that, uh, that poly immunity, which is pretty nice. I guess I'll swap out this wand for this wand. Let's see, which which wand is better stats-wise? They're very comparable. Doesn't really matter here. Ugh. Oh, so CK says definitely has the same drops. So you got, you got the same drops in your uh, daily run boss kill. Damn, look at that guy. He did some serious damage to me. Let's get out of here before I get myself in trouble goofing around. Too much goofing. So another way that we could kill our friend over here. Nah, there's no time. We'll just kill, we'll just kill him as we have been killing him. Alright, he dead. Are there any spells that I want? Eh. That's a pretty good want. Uh, we don't have a lot of money, though, so... If there's anything we want, we have to come back for it. I think we're good. I don't want any of those either. Okay. So this is going to be our infinite healing wand. Whoop. Alright, should be able to heal ourselves easy. Okay, so the next boss that we're going to fight uh, is the Master of Masters. And this guy is, uh, is a pretty interesting one because after we kill him, we will gain the ability to edit our wands wherever we are. So we just need to prep for him and then we can worry about prepping for the other guys afterwards. Hmm. Piercing trigger nukes. This is the stuff you guys are theory crafting up. You're seeing trigger nukes. Uh, okay, so we're gonna make it so that we can actually see the black holes now, because it was getting a little annoying where you couldn't visually see it. I could use the heavy shot on our ma uh, main wand if we wanted to. We would put it something like, you know, just slap it down right there. The downfall to this though is we'd have kickback, right? And while our damage would be very, very high, it would be kind of frustrating to fight something like with Big Steve, right? I put Ambrosia on myself and I and I fire at him. Well, the heavy shot will shove us backwards, so you have to be you have to be very careful with that. I think I saw a good spell on the on the first one. What'd you see? I'm seeing there. What'd you see? It must have been a nuke. I wasn't even I wasn't even paying attention. Is there nukes on like every wand? Okay, this one doesn't have it. But this one has nukes. That one has nukes, and that. So three of the wands have nukes on them. 
All right. What moves are we going to make here? I think we'll go without the heavy shot. Was there any crit on oils? I wasn't even looking for that. Doesn't look like it. You know, Tali figure out uh, that piercing uh, to explosive boxes completely demolished uh, the master of masters. This does seem really familiar. Like it blew up all the orbs or some shit because the explosion radius was large enough. I can't remember exactly what it was. What's up, Hell the Beard? Proposing his crazy ideas. These guys. Yeah, damage plus, though. We do have lots of da additional damage. I think we're going to be fine as is. The only reason I'm not using too much damage pluses and stuff yet is because uh, I'm going to be using Ambrosia on this next fight, and I want to make sure that I don't have any recoil. Because remember, damage plus, while it is very good and uh, can, can be super useful at times, in our current situation, uh, damage plus will put a little bit of recoil on our wand, which could get us in trouble with uh, whenever we need Ambrosia on ourselves. And then in a bit, whenever we do need it, we should have the editing uh, ability. So there's the final boss. We won't kill him to the very end, but we can save the, the best for last. Gas blood to stop bleeding oil. That's actually a really good idea. I like that idea. I didn't even think about that, uh, Thalina. I was thinking gas blood. I was like, I don't want gas blood. But we already are bleeding oil blood. So that, that shit's much more annoying if you're trying to use ambrosia and stuff than, than gas blood is. So gas blood it is. Good call. Sadly, no acid spells around there, Stack. Yeah, so this boss right here that we're going to be fighting... Um, this boss is kind of deadly. Uh, kind of very deadly. I can remember, you know, whenever they added the Master of Masters, you know, we already had hundreds of wins. So when a new boss was always exciting, but it was never, like, super scary. You're always like, okay, I guess you got to be aware that if there's polymorph shots, be careful of that. But, you know, besides being afraid of polymorph shots, you're like, I got, I got this. Because damage-wise, you usually feel confident that you can build enough damage. However, this boss is dangerous because if you build really good damage, you actually can kill yourself. Because the uh, there's these orbs that orbit this guy that we're about to fight. I'll, I'll be pointing them out in a moment. But the red ones, the red ones actually reflect the damage back to the player as cursed damage. So, you have to be super careful. So I remember the very first time I fought him, I, you know, just obliterated my own health bar and killed myself. Because I was like, oh, I have the damage, I'm not scared, and then dead. So this fight, I, I, approach, I approach it very uh, pansy these days, very cautiously. Because there are lots of things that can go wrong in this fight. Mainly, the fact that the boss is located in a, a very odd place. This area that we've been digging around is actually the mage's den and i can pour, pull this up for you real fast ck actually was thinking ahead of me already pulled up the map so remember earlier when i killed the door boss and um i showed you guys yeah it was right it was right here this is that boss that we killed we threw the eggs at the the, the boss came to life we killed it well from there you can travel into the zone uh the magic temp magical temple then there's like the mage's den all kinds of crazy shit you travel all the way over to... Wait, where am I right now? Oh, all the way over to here. Uh, there's an orb down here. And then there is a uh, this Master of Masters boss spawns here. Well, this is all highly dangerous. This area is filled with Ukos, Polymages, all kinds of very deadly enemies. So what we did is we said, fuck it. And we went by the boss and we dug through the wall. 
and we're just digging along in this terrain and it's uh we got this area pretty much memorized this part of the map and i just dig along keep following the cursed rock dig along dig along keep following the cursed rock and then I, I heard the orb you could hear it just a second ago meaning like i was passing right about here i could hear it and then we dig till right around here and then we go up and that way we end up right uh we approach the mages the the master of masters without going through the mages den what makes this area so scary is that if you fight them out here in the regular zone um there are mages that can just roam up and fight you there are teleport mages jumping all over the place sometimes you're here to fight the master of masters and you die to some other random variable so what i tend to do is i create a cubby over here on the right side it's a safe zone where i can fight the boss without the bullshit uh random rng sometimes you get lucky and nothing happens to you most of the time you get lucky and nothing really happens to you but once you get burned twice by what you feel to be an unlucky you know bullshit moment uh, it makes you more cautious and, and fight them from the side i feel like and whenever you fight them this way it's 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 pretty safe it's pretty pretty secure win Let's, uh... And the reason I'm willing to take a bit of damage here is because, remember, we were building that healing wand, right? We didn't even take that much damage either. Because, remember, to take high damage, you gotta be touching the cursed rock. I did my best not to touch the cursed rock. I just flew through the curse. Uh, so we shoot the heal into the ceiling. And, uh... Just about... Yeah, there we go. Healed up. Let's see if we can fight or find this boss. There it is. It's the boss zone. I recognize it. So what we want to do. So we dug a hole right alongside the boss's arena. Shoot into the boss's arena. Spot here. Um, that's okay. That may be too large right there. There you go. The boss is up on me. He casts a spell on me. Self-homing spells. Okay. Okay, boomerang. So there he comes. Kind of scary looking. He can summon some very deadly stuff, so be careful. Um, oops. That was... Should have waited till self-homing whatever thing was done. I'm digging extra spots here, so I have spots to hide in uh, during the fight if shit gets real. Because he will summon in some scary stuff. So you want to shoot the purple orbs, not the red ones. You can actually almost insta-kill yourself. If you do a thousand damage to one of those things, it means it'll hit you with a thousand curse damage. So you want to hit the purple ones. Purple ones bleed, which makes it where if you have ambrosia on yourself, it'll wash off the ambrosia. That part's frustrating. But if you do it cautiously like this, you can kind of sort your way through them. Get out of there. Oh, shit. See, we did a bit of damage to ourselves. We didn't hit ourselves too much, though, so we're fine. We only have one left. Once we kill all the purple ones, now you can actually hit the main dude. All right, uh, ow. So the main dude's kind of weird, because when you hit him directly, you'll find, like, a lot of times your damage is not that high. I feel, sometimes I find like if I ricochet the payload off the wall, the damage hits a little a little better. Because he's absorbing most of our damage here. We're barely getting any damage in. We need to ricochet the payload. Ugh. Maybe I just jump into his head and just blast him. Ew. Stop being annoying. I don't like this path that we've dug. I wonder if I can dig us a better one. Hmm. Got him for a good chip damage there. There we go. Working pretty well. Withered, we're vulnerable to all damage types. Yep. Eldritch portal worst uh, casting ever. Yeah, the Eldritch portal uh, can actually kill uh, the final boss uh, if you only have gotten like uh, zero, you got like zero or one orb or something. 
That's pretty well. If you're curious, the boss is casting stuff on me. T uh, Twitchy makes it where my own spells can hurt me. So I'm having to wait it out. And uh, there we go. We're looking pretty good now. We almost got him. So you gotta watch these right here. He summons crap in. And he can summon in polymages with that. So be very cautious. And there we go. And we got him. So again, as you see, this fight, we approach it... This is like a super conservative pro approach. We, we go from the right side. We dig ourselves little tunnels. And the reason you want to have these these walls like this, and you want to kind of poke at him, is because he can actually fire off polymorph shots, uh, polymorphine shots, which, uh, you know, a barrage of them, in fact, which is very hard to dodge. And uh, he shoots off tele shots. He, he throws out mages that can do stuff. But if, if you fight him in the, tr the walls like that, really nothing to be scared of. You fight him out in the main area, you got these mages that will just tele in. You got all kinds of bullshit that can screw you over mid-fight, even though you did pretty much nothing wrong. Uh, so the thing that we need to grab here, the most important thing to grab, is this stone right here. This stone. So right now we cannot edit, but if you hold out the stone... You can now edit your wands wherever you're at. So the master of masters, we have killed him. And we've also opened up the run quite a bit for ourselves. So uh, we already have a wand refresh. We don't need that. Which is kind of funny because you see how the, we already had the wand refresh. Um, that was dropped by the alchemist. The alchemist is not supposed to drop this. And I should have pointed that out earlier. If the alchemist drops the wand refresh... The game actually unlocks all of the Master of Masters spells uh, for you. Because it thinks that you killed the Master of Masters to get the wand refresh. Because that's that's who's supposed to drop it. But earlier we got it from the Alchemist. So, But it, obviously we've already, we've already done this in our past run. So it doesn't really affect us at all here. But it's something interesting because I know some people ask me. And they'll say, where, where do you get the add trigger and add timer and all that stuff? And I say, you have to kill the Master of Masters. And they're like, but I've never killed the Master of Masters before, and I got an ad trigger in my run. How did how did I get it without ever killing him? And it's like, well, you probably killed the Alchemist before, and the Alchemist has a bug where if he drops Wand Refresh, it unlocks the spell. So, and they're like, eh. yeah, it's some weird stuff. Uh, I don't know why the game is not letting me. There we go. Uh, that boss right there actually has some interesting ways to kill him. Uh, the key thing to remember is you do not want to hit those red orbs unless you're hitting it with something that doesn't know you're the one hitting it. An example would be uh, if you summon like a sea of acid on top of that boss, it actually messes them up big time. And it doesn't hurt you because acid, you don't own the, the liquid acid that goes everywhere. So when it washes on top of the boss and it hits those, those red orbs, it doesn't reflect the damage to you because it doesn't know that you're the one that fired it. Uh, it's actually a method that uh, is, uh, is a pretty cool way to kill them that wasn't uh, discovered until much later. Um, I think it was... Uh, uh, Alias and Latali discovered that one. It was really interesting. Can't you use the wand refresh uh, to make a heal wand uh, double as a backpack? Yes. Yes, uh, I could actually. Which is probably a, a decent idea. We even have this space right here to to store stuff that I haven't been using. So like what you could do is you put something like this here. Then you could put whatever crap that you don't need um, back there. It doesn't really matter. It's still, still, it'll shoot off its heels and do whatever. All right. I'm trying to decide on what our build's gonna be for this, our upcoming fights, because once we've killed the master of masters there. We've killed Pyramid, Alchemist, Bridge Boss, the Dragon, the Door Boss, the Master of Masters. So we're halfway through our bosses, but we're actually much further than that. Like we're we're pretty far along now because these final these other bosses we can you know get through them decently fast. What's up there, Wote? What's up there, Strange? Wait, you cursed me into death today. What did I do? What did I do? Time for Mecha Colmy and Tiny. I think it is just about time for them. Uh, however, I kind of want to go back to the, the fungal zone. I mean, the, the overgrown caverns and farm up another ad mana. So 
So let's see. We don't we don't need those. Go ahead and get out of this area. All right. So we keep heading to the right. We're heading uh, the next the next two bosses that are available to us are Tiny and Mecha Komi, which Mecha Komi basically it's like a you know it's a machine version of the final boss, and he is uh, pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. Do, do, do. Alright, so... We're gonna go ahead and build a, a better wand first before we get going too crazy. Because our main wand, we can't really spam a lot of our spells. Because we only have one add mana. So we can spam our main wand, but if we put something expensive, like uh, the large explosive box on there... We're going to lose our ability to, to spam with it. Do Omega Saw Blades count as your damage? Um, I believe, yeah, you're credited for the damage on the Omega Saw Blade. But it's like a piercing damage, so it can also be self-damage. So you'll see these enemies right here. This area to our left, this is where Mecha Komi spawns. And in fact, here is the, uh, the the machine gun, the turret. It's a pretty funny wand. I mean, it's really goofy. I don't. Not many people use it. There's not, not really much of a reason to use it. The stats are kind of wild, but yeah, not really much reason for it. The doom gun, <laughs> exactly, Nacy. So I'm trying to set myself up for again. This is an all boss run where we're playing uh, very conservative. You can you can take on a lot. Like right now, we're probably probably well enough equipped that we could take these bosses on because of the explosion weakening curse. We just have to be slightly cautious from time to time and and don't just stand there and just take any shots to the face. But instead, for an all boss run for YouTube, we got to play this conservative. We got to make sure it's a guaranteed victory. Uh, is it, are we high enough up yet? Nope, we are not high enough. So what we're doing is we're actually digging our way up to the overgrown caverns, which here it is. This area, like I said earlier, is uh, filled with resources. So we're making our way back into here real quick, just to hope for an add mana or maybe like an explosive projectile, something like that. Would be nice. Oh my God. Whew. That guy is very deadly. That's right there. Look at all that blood money. If you're curious why there's so much blood money, is there's lots of explosions and just bullshit that happens in this area. Like the environment is just volatile. There's just crazy shit happening everywhere. And because of that, oh, another heavy shot. I don't need another heavy shot though. Uh, but because of that, you'll see lots of blood money in this zone if you grab the perk blood money. Otherwise, it'd just be regular gold. Nope. Grab that. Don't mind if I do. Uh, eh. Oh, not your request for Chrono Trigger, just for the shop. Uh, I saw it was a thing in the front. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha there, Nifty. Well, yeah, no problem, man. No problem. No problem at all. The reasonable request. Um... Uh, Come on, game. We're just wanting to prepare for our final bosses to, that we got to deal with. Our final half. Another ex dude. This is the run of explosion weakening curses. They're usually decently rare. They can. Oh, yes. Uh, that'll work. That's that's huge. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab, uh, grab it, grab out our stone, put it this up. Honestly, the propane tanks are also pretty badass for damage. Because the propane tanks do 1,300, uh, which, you know, it's for uh, us for 1,100. Hmm. Something to think about. 
Okay, so we could use that for our explosion if we would like to. Which it is tempting. Lots of digging stuff. I'm just kind of glancing around. Like I said, add mono was, was my main focus, but explosive projectile means that we can use a different kind of explosion wand that's a little bit cheaper. This is perfect. Chainsaws actually do a separate type of damage. They do slice damage. And while a lot of these um, like bosses that we run into, you'll see that they actually absorb all of our regular projectile damage. They usually don't do so well against chainsaws. They usually uh, they get fucked up by slice damage. It's not melee damage. That's something different. But slice damage is, is, is good. Good stuff. Can you do Nalo propane tanks? I believe so. They should insta-detonate, I think. Okay, so we got chainsaws here. We're gonna grab this and then go crazy with the chainsaws, I think. Alright, so let's... Uh... By the way, when you pull the stone out, you'll notice it converts any liquid materials over to uh, concentrated mana. Probably should have pointed that out, but I'm, I think most of you guys already are aware of that being a thing. It even works on lava and stuff. You can swim in lava while you hold this out because it'll convert it over to concentrated mana as you're swimming in it. Okay. Ooh, that was dangerous. I saw that bullshit that guy just tried to pull. Okay, let's say we swap some of this stuff out, right? I like that. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Going in with just slice damage alone, though. There's a freeze. I would kind of like a second explosive projectile just to amp up our damage instead of... Because we just have the oil. Oil is one of the, the only spells that we have right now that... Uh, oil and luminous drill that will detonate for high damage with just one explosive projectile. Okay. Can you burn slash evaporate concentrated mana and would that help against the water boss? Um, no, it does not burn. It's, it's, yeah, it's not like a, like an oil or anything like that. They can just kind of ignite it. Uh, if anything, it's kind of bad against the uh, Leviathan, which I think is what the one you're referring to as the water boss, the guy that's in the lake. It's kind of a bad thing to, to convert it to concentrated mana because the whole, you got to keep in mind, if you, if you even pour a drip of concentrated mana in the lake, the whole lake will start converting over to concentrated mana. And it makes it very difficult to see the boss. You'll you'll just be like, where the hell is he? Oh, look at that electric stone. Trying to kill us. Let's shoot that thing. Kill the stone off. Bad reckon I wouldn't recommend it. Ooh, a second explosive projectile. Let's uh put that up here. There we go. Double explosive projectiles. Life is good. Surprised we didn't find another add mana though. An acid potion. Now this place can be scary for, for potions and stuff, because they could be poly flasks, accidentally go flying into a poly flask. The easy way to lose a run. That is acid right there I almost just dove into. Huh. Alright, well let's check out the double explosive projectile setup that we got going on here. Okay. So... Interesting about this setup is that we can... Scoot these over. 
we put oh my god just jesus area is just everything's exploding um gonna take a moment i'm trying to matter of the order just try to organize this go add trigger on a double trigger which actually turns this into a single trigger so add trigger on any projectile just turns it into a single trigger so we could uh, we could it doesn't really matter if we leave it. we could even use a spark bolt there that's it's going to be the same result pretty much uh and in between it though we want to put the weakening curse because remember anything between an add trigger and the projectile that the trigger is added to the modifiers in between it are free um so then let's see four one two three four let's move that there one two oil can be removed and then as you can see pretty explosive and even if like i said even if we put the double trigger it'd be the same results it still turns it into a single trigger and it costs the same mana and everything, so either way, it's fine. So we're gonna make our way over to these bosses. Double explosive projectile is is crazy damage, by the way. Um, each individual shot in here, because of the double explosive projectile, will hit for 330 damage of uh, like explosion damage. Which I've talked about that in my past videos, so I won't go ranting on it too much. Just know, one explosive projectile, eh, two explosive projectiles, ba-boom. Would the explosive projectile plus the oil uh, drop trick blood money? Yes, it does, Aaron. Yes, it does. Just like it could hurt me if I didn't have explosion immunity, it will give us uh, trick blood money, which I guess I could show that to you if you're interested. Um... Actually, it's kind of kind of annoying to show right now. Let's see. We're kind of we're limited in our wand space. That's the only reason it becomes a little tricky. Oh, I got it. So we don't need this one. Could let go of that. I don't know why the enemies roam over one at a time. Move these to the side real quick. All right. So check this out. Double trigger, which we're just going to put, so we put oil, and then a single explosive projectile, just one. But so this one is one of the few spells, a material spell is uh, is one of the few spells that makes it where it does high damage off of just one explosive projectile. The downfall to this is it does do self damage. So see it says blocked, that's because I have explosion immunity. Let's go ahead and fire this at some enemies, like this guy right here. See they drop blood money. That's because that explosion is not owned by the player because the material is just a, uh, it's a pixel of oil. And you cannot own a pixel of oil. So you'll see that everything that I kill with this combination, very basic, very simple, but uh, super powerful whenever you have blood money. Now, keep in mind, I think I, th I feel like some people are like, ooh, I gotta run that build. And yes, it's good for damage, but keep in mind that you will not get blood money unless you have the perk. Just getting more and more blood money. Now, if uh, you don't have explosion immunity, I wouldn't run this build. However, you can still be excited for explosive projectile because uh, two explosive projectiles does the damage that oil, you know that, that crazy damage that we were just getting off of oil right then, does the same amount of damage but now it works for every single one of these uh, projectiles in the in the group. And these are safe. This does not hurt the player. So you'll see when I shoot it down. Well, it does say blocked, but the reason it's that you're seeing the blocked message is not because it's uh, protect, protecting me from the damage. You're actually seeing that because uh, the fire that would burn me, the oil is actually blocking the fire. So fire would, it doesn't really hurt that much. This is safe to use. Uh, other than taking a little bit of fire damage. And this one does do crazy high damage. I think if I made my character, let's see, if we cover him in water. Oh, it's still saying the blocked. Is there something I'm missing here on the double explosive projectile? I don't think so. I think it is just the fire being blocked. Uh, Alright, let's put things back as the way they were. 
this, 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 and supposed to be a double. There you go. What exactly is blood money? Blood money, so right here I have a perk called trick blood money. Uh, blood money is, instead of getting gold, when normally when you kill an enemy they drop gold, right? It's the yellow gold. Um, instead it's red money and it's money that when you pick it up it heals you so not only do you get gold but you also get healing with each nugget of gold that you each each nugget of blood money that you pick up so that's why it was kind of a a helpful trick or whatever so we can kill the bosses uh here in whatever order it doesn't really matter we'll probably we'll kill the mecha colmy first since uh, it'll be the first one we're coming up on So again, if you're fighting Mecha Komi, if you're going to go fight them, test out your damage on these these enemies that are around here. They help you learn if you have if you currently have good damage, because they share a lot of the same immunities that the boss has. So you see, there was an enemy right there. We blew his ass up like immediately. Uh, let me see. Let's see about this guy. This is this is a good sign, you know. Okay, enemies are dying. Do my shots, and uh, they're enemies that are exclusive to this zone. Like you only see them here. So you know, like, all right, you're 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 gonna be fine. If you're not killing those guys really fast, then uh, you should be afraid, because you may have it uh, not built for this boss correctly. Now there's a couple of these enemies, uh, like those guys, those are, those in that right there, they're not, they're not exclusive to this zone, so regular wants can kill them. But the ones that you only see in this zone, that's where you're like, all right, gotta test out my damage. Let's just keep heading over here. The boss spawn zone. There's a glue guy. He's not a big deal. Come on. Come on. Oh. Stay back. There's the guy causing the problems. Get him out of here. I was in trouble. That guy actually tanked a shot there for a second. Uh, oh, there's the boss. Oh, shit. All right, so we got to be kind of careful because he does shoot out some bullshit. That's pretty dangerous. There we go. We got him. Ow, motherfucker. One of the missiles got me. <laughs> like ricocheted off a wall. Uh, so that boss, whenever you kill him, the mecha version of Komi, he actually drops a perk. It's called spatial awareness. When you grab it, and you stand still, it actually kind of gives you a map of what the hell's going on in the world. So, uh, again, sorry I didn't give you a better look at that Mecha Colmy there. He, he roams out very aggressively out of his boss zone. And uh, he, he actually can be dangerous. Like, um, I've, I, he shoots out, like, plasma beam level stuff. Like, he shoots out some stuff that can do thousands of damage to you. And, I, and I've died to him before, so... Usually when I see him, I really don't give him much of a chance. I just blow him up. And the, and the key to killing that guy so quick was the double explosive projectile and the weakening curse that's attached to the spark bolt trigger. Because without that, uh, the boss would have just like absorbed our explosions and, and laughed in our face. But instead, we were ready to go. We weakened him, and then the, the explosions just detonated, and he was, he was done. Uh, so we'll use this time, I think, to heal up real quick, too. Get that off the ceiling. Uh, no heal. There we go. Healed up pretty much. Make our way back home. Guess we'll check this uh, wand just in, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Deer. A trick is an enemy dying by means other than uh, your spells. They normally drop double gold when that happens. Blood money is gold, but red in heals. Trick blood money turns gold drop by trick kills into blood money. If I recall, that perk is the only way to get blood money. So yeah, that in yeah, like like Mag is saying, um, the uh, no wand tinkering also gives it, but that that one's not really worth. <laughs> Not really worth, not that I've seen at least. But yeah, good good breakdown there, Nifty. Good breakdown. Trick kills is pretty usually referred to as like environmental kills. It's when the game is like, I don't know who killed this thing, so I guess, you know, drop double gold. Like it's like bonus gold for it uh, for the trick kill. 
All right, so this boss right here is uh, one that you have to be kind of ready for. And I have fucked up Intelli directly into this boss's mouth before and insta-died. This boss, just like the dragon boss, does thousands of damage in melee damage. We are not we are not melee immune, so if the boss makes contact with us, we die. We gotta be careful. Uh, so now we're in the bottom corner. You can see the map, it's the it's just the bottom corner edge. We can dig into it. So we're gonna move over here to the side. We're gonna look for two Duke the second picture. So there's a picture. See this right here? This is the first one. It's like a little up arrow and a rock kind of thing. I don't know what the hell. Um, but you see the first one, and you go over to the second one. Boom! This is number two. So now I know that boss is directly below the second picture on the wall. So if I go directly down from here, he'll be down there, and he'll be waiting. And I gotta make sure that when I see him, I pull out my main wand, and I fire that. Because otherwise, uh, I can either... A lot of these boss fights... You can die in a second, and the boss can die in a second, is what it comes down to. The Master of Masters, that one was a slow one, right? But this one, this one is one that right, uh, well, is very scary. You guys can see this guy right now. He is drenched in sweat. And I'll be pulling up more with this map thing in a bit. You'll get to see why I wanted to grab the spatial awareness. Uh, Nectar with the Prime 2 Monther says, Yo, I saw urine for the first time yesterday. Is that new? Urine jars have been in the game since, uh, I believe, the very launch of Noita. Um, in fact, they used to have it where I think it was deer. Deer used to urinate. Uh, this was like in the before it even released in early access, I believe. And so deer used to urinate, but the problem was the deer kept like drowning in the urine and stuff. So they eventually made it where there was just a uh, a jar of urine can spawn. And I think it's a chat said it's a reference to TF2 or something like that. Um, but yeah, the urine jar is is very rare and it actually spawns uh because of a specific formation in noita it's a very rare formation that you can see in the first zone but whenever you do there will be it's not a flask it's literally a jar of urine uh it's 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 kind of like exciting the first time you see it you're like oh shit but there's really not a lot you can do with it um oh shit i try trying to scratch my eyebrow over here um there's not a lot you can do with it it's um it's really weird this is one of those things in noita that's very rare you see it and you're just like the exciting thing is that you saw it i guess not that it does anything too crazy where the hell is this oh shit there it is i was getting anxious so again like i said i can one shot that boss the boss can one shot me it's like who one shots the other one first is the whole whole challenge here and i'm planning for it to hopefully not be me getting one shot All right, so we'll even put a little bit of ambrosia on ourselves just for, you know, some insurance. Didn't put much on ourselves, did we? Woo! He was coming. He was coming. I, it sucks because I would like to give you guys a better look, but without melee immunity, I really can't give you much of a look. Otherwise, it, it, it comes at a heavy price. <laughs> A.K.A. my life. Because <laughs> you can see, that boss spawned in and he was, he was coming at. You can bear grills it <laughs> to drink drink the urine. Drink the urine. You had an extra life. What the fuck is that boss? Yeah, that that boss's nickname uh, is is tiny. Like most people refer to him as tiny. It's even nicknamed in the files as tiny. It's a uh, it's a worm, just like the dragon boss, but this one is huge. Um, I, I like I said, I would like to have given you a better look at him, but he means business. And he will rip your face off if given the opportunity, which you can see he was he was about to rip my face off. Uh, so he dies, and he drops like these very high tier wands. Like look at these bad boys; they're they're usually pretty crazy. That one is shit. He drops a heal as well. There it is, and he drops a heart. Actually, is this one an uh, is this one that adds fifty six seventy? We go to yeah, it's a large, so it actually it actually adds double, adds fifty rather than twenty five. Um, okay, didn't mean to shoot that like that. And we're healed. Okay, so do a quick. Let me get to the surface, and we'll do a breakdown of what we got left here. 
There we go, back here. All right, so we idle around for a moment. Uh, you see this green dot right here? This green dot represents the friendly boss, which is why I needed to grab this perk that the Mecha Komi dropped. So spatial awareness has given us a map of the overworld. We are the red dot right here. And the green is one of the bosses that we need to find. So the friendly boss, which we're not going to be so friendly with. We are going to murder him. So the bosses that we've killed, there are 12 total. We've killed the pyramid boss. We have killed the alchemist. We've killed uh, the bridge boss. We have killed the dragon. We killed the door boss. We killed the master masters. We killed the Mecha Komi. We killed Tiny, which is what just happened. So that's eight bosses down. Four remain. The four that remain are uh, the Leviathan. Oh my, I feel like I'm missing somebody. The Leviathan, the Friendly Boss, the Forgotten, and the Final Boss. Those are the four remaining. All right. Does, uh, does the perk that doubles hearts max HP uh, also double the base 50? Yes. So that heart will be 100. Um, yeah, thank you, Red P-Dog, for answering that. Yeah, it doubles all hearts, which uh, is, is, is pretty cool. And not only that, but uh, whenever, you, whenever you open a chest and you see a heart fall out of it, um, sometimes I, I before I even grab it, I'll actually hover my mouse over it because if it says it'll say large extra uh, health, like it doesn't always just say max. Uh, what's, I forget what the exact thing is. What's the name of it? It's called like extra max HP. It'll say large extra max HP or something like that. Um, that happens pretty frequently, and um, I, I think most likely if you have a like a hundred hours played in Noita, you've probably grabbed some of those from a chest and you may not even have realized it because the the large heart drops happen at least like once a week i get a large heart drop from a chest so it's not that uncommon is that overlay a mod no no this is the the perk that the boss drops spatial awareness it makes it where you have to stand still and then it and then this pops up it is, uh, you have to kill the, the robot version of Colmy that is, uh, in the power plant zone. Which is the zone we just recently left. Oh, I know what I was doing. Hold on, we're going the wrong way, chat. I need to go through that path that I had dug on that sidewall because we need to return to the surface. I was not thinking. We must go back. Actually, you know what we should do while we're traveling? To save ourselves, you know, from going crazy? Nala? Sorry, it's kind of, maybe kind of loud, I don't know. I have my headset turned up, I think, a little bit louder than usual. It's kind of loud as heck for me. Woo! Oh, not that way. Keep going. Which sometimes people ask me, uh, why is Nala used on Tele Wands? Let me show you. Let me remove this Nala off of it, and then I'm going to use it uh, again. You see this? You see the difference how it travels? It's still not bad, right? Like, I have to shoot against walls to move very well. But it's, it's like, way more spastic. Like, whenever you're moving up a wall, it's not bad. But whenever you're in a zone area like this, it's kind of annoying to telly around. So whenever you have... You know, you'll especially notice the difference in the overworld. Which, uh, I guess, will be there in just a moment. Move that Nala back for the moment for, for safety reasons. Um... Here is the uh, moon radar, which we don't need moon radar in this run. We have no reason for it. Come on. The fly in my room trying to get out. That's is that what it reminds you of? <laughs> Spazzing out. Uh, okay, so without without the uh, Nala, let's say I'm traveling to the left, right? 
I mean, let's say I'm traveling to the left, correct. <laughs> uh, so when I'd be teleporting, I'm like this. See, it's a little, it's a, kind of spastic. And it doesn't move necessarily that fast because of how, how like, suboptimal the movement is. But instead, you put the Nala on there, and the Nala will kill off the projectile so quick that it allows you to just travel along very quickly, very efficiently. This is one of the reasons you see people like using Nala so much on travel wands. I get asked that pretty regularly, but people usually ask it, and I'm like in the starting zone, and I try to explain what you just saw, but it's kind of it's kind of hard to explain whenever they're not actually shooting it. It's like, well, you don't want to travel as far because you kind of like kind of zigzag all over. You'd rather just short travel a short distance really fast. But yeah, once you once you see it, it's like, oh, it makes sense. It's only true for like really fast firing ones though. Uh, wait, I passed the. There it is. Uh, okay, so Telly doesn't make much sense holding on to this anymore. All right, so this eye right here is needed to kill the forgotten boss, which uh, don't worry, I'll show it to you like how it works whenever I get there for the fight. Uh, still keep going. Rapid teleporting should make your character puke periodically. <laughs> That'd actually be pretty cool. I'd like that. It'd be hilarious. It like reminds me of whenever uh, you carry, if you if you bring out the poop stone in front of the boss, the boss will throw up. <laughs> like randomly it just goes bleh. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? He starts puking. Uh, all right. Ugh. <sighs> So we are the red dots, we are traveling to the green dots. <laughs> Actually makes me a little nervous. Uh, I'm gonna go around the edge here real quick. You can go through that area, it's just... Electricity and all that crap's pretty common in there. Run into a flask with Polly, you just never know. Kristen says, Guys, guys, the red dot is moving towards the green dot. I think we are the green dot. <laughs> Chat's the green dot? You're you're the friendly boss, chat? Trying to drop down in such a way that I'll be beside the green dot. Now we're close. We are getting close. Here we are. Chad, it's you! You're adorable! Wait, why are you trying to spit on me? What the hell, Chad? It is you guys! That's your that's your sign! Alright, no, they're just they just spit on you. They're they're called the friendly boss, or referred to as the friendly boss, also the as the horror monster. These are the babies, and this is the, the big fella. And you'll actually notice in the background, uh, in the background is the uh, that Avarice Diamond or whatever. That's at the top of the tower. Using these little guys is how you unlock the Giga Nukes. And using, uh, you just need one of the little guys. You can put them in a, a in the, they call it Carl. People nickname the rocket ship Carl. You have uh, little guys climb into the rocket ship, and you fly it to the Avarice Diamond. And it will unlock the uh, Giga Nuke. And then the big guy, you can't get him in the rocket ship. He, does, he doesn't fit. So you have to just like aggro him and slowly bring him over to the um, to the Avarice Diamond. And he'll unlock a Giga Holy Bomb. If you don't know what they look like, it's these right here. There's Giga Nuke. And then there is Giga Holy Bomb. 50% of them are weebs. Burn them. <laughs> Burn them. All right. Well, it's time to exterminate. I didn't realize they were weebs. See you, weebs. I gotta get the heck out of the way though. I don't wanna get killed here. What's the rocket ship? The rocket ship is located uh, right next to the, you know in the first zone how there's that thing of lava? It's located right next to that. Uh, it's on like the little track. 
You you probably have seen it before, Liquid Discharge, I would think. Oh, what the hell? Is Big Boy still alive? Hey, what the? I didn't realize he was still alive. He was pissed. You killed my family. Well, the, the friendly boss is now dead. We weren't very friendly with him. Uh, okay, so if you're curious what, what exactly makes these bosses, like what makes people decide which are the bosses or whatever, is uh, I showed it earlier in the run, and if you want to, if you're in the chat, you can type exclamation mark pillar. But there's a specific pillar that is like the boss's pillar. Each one of them represents a boss. So if the, if you if they have an image on that pillar, that's what makes them considered one of the twelve bosses. And that big boy right there has a pillar on it. So that's why he's considered one of the bosses. Now um, it's time to go fight the Leviathan, I believe. So this one is a little dangerous. See if I can line this up. This guy, this guy is like super resistant to shit. Very, very difficult to kill if you do not have any kind of a weakening curses, which luckily we do have a weakening curse. And normally we'd be drowning, but we have Breathless. We got the perk Breathless. Um, so what we're going to do is we actually look for the Essence. Where are you, Essence? There we go. Here's the Essence, and the boss should be directly above the Essence. It is laggy as hell. Nectar says this one looks scary. Yeah, this guy means business. If I mess up the shot, uh, I could get myself killed. Yeah, to be a little careful. Keep going directly up. There he is. That's the Leviathan. And in fact, oh shit, I can't bring out my stone. I can't bring out my stone to edit to put the add mana back over here because it'll start converting over the whole lake to mana. And that'll make it very difficult to see. Fuck it, we'll just go by without uh, without using the add mod on there. Yeah, just yeah, like Nacy, like Nacy said, we'll just wait the recharge time. Get this guy out of here. Okay, so this guy his hitbox is a little bit awkward. If you shoot it from like below, I mean from from above, I think it's like right here is like the sweet spot that you want to hit it. And keep in mind, if I did not have the explosive weakening curse, this would do zero damage to this boss. So we gotta shoot it and then get the heck out of the way. Okay, so we did a bit of damage, but not much. Well, it's supposed to be more damage than that. Got a little bit more damage in. So those things that he's shooting off right there will insta kill me if uh, if I if they do make contact with me. Maybe I'd have more luck from the side. Let me see. Yeah, no, it's no not more luck. We almost got him. Oh, 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 stay the fuck back. So there you go, and it drops the greater chest. No! No! Was I fast enough to keep it on screen? I was not. Damn it! I, I want to open the greater chest, but sometimes it can drop like polymorphine and stuff, so I didn't want to risk it. That greater chest right there can, um... Can have some uh, pretty insane stuff in it. No free shelf? Yeah, the smart thing would have been to build a free shelf. I messed up. But yeah, whenever you kill that boss, he drops a greater chest uh, and, uh, and a heal and everything. And uh, that greater chest can drop anyth anything in Noita that you can think of could possibly drop out of that greater chest. Um, the salt that you grab to get the wind, it can drop out of the chest. An orb can drop out of that chest. Uh, any possible spell in the game, anything can drop out of this greater chest. Any liquid that exists in the game can drop out of that chest. There is a there is a powder, uh, uh, a mo monster powder that actually can create bosses. So there's a chance that that, that it can drop a flask that is filled with the equivalent of like uh, you know like you ten bridge bosses in it. It can be bad. insane. So that's why I was being a little cautious and I was trying to. Um, can it drop the black sun? It cannot drop the black sun. Sadly. Um, that would be badass. It just dropped the whole sun out of it. It can drop the Giga Black Hole, which is kind of like a mini sun, I guess. Uh, 
<laughs> What's up, Kuba? I just noticed your message, man. I had to mute that, Kuba. People were memeing. Chaz Green, thank you for the follow. Let's see, what am I missing here? Yeah, so the point is, weakening curse, that's how we killed the Leviathan there. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out, that's what I was like thinking, there's something I'm forgetting. So all the water in our world got converted over to smoke, which I'm sure you noticed by now. And that's what happens when you kill the Leviathan. So you really wouldn't want to kill the Leviathan really early in a run if you didn't have fire immunity. Otherwise, that could become really freaking annoying. Uh, because now you would have, you just have to find another, you have to get blood to put out the, the fire and stuff. So yeah, our, our, yeah, our, our, fla our flask of water now is a flask of, of smoke. So be careful on when you kill this boss, make sure you're prepared for it. We're fire immune, so it's not, not a big deal. There, there's what I wanted to show you. So this portal right here actually takes you to the Leviathan portal room, which I'm not going to jump in right now because uh, there's no need to. Uh, however, if you just kill it in one of your runs, it doesn't have to be in the same run. It's like if you kill it any time in your Noita history, it will unlock the portal room in all of your future runs. So if you kill this Leviathan and then a month later you're playing Noita, that portal room is still unlocked that you can go visit. It basically is just like shortcuts to, to send you around the world other spots uh, very quickly that's why the, that's why i'm not jumping into it right now is because i mean it's just shortcuts it'd be like oh hey we can travel to hell in a in a single portal instead of having to dig through the lava little things like that it's pretty cool but it's you know it's just it's just convenient but uh right now we are looking to head over to wait where are we right now where are we oh this is it holy crap that was fast so the forgotten cave this boss right here is uh, is the boss that you cannot fight unless you have this eye. And some people will accidentally shoot a black hole and eat, and eat up the eye here. And if you do that, you have to go find another one so that you're able to kill this boss. And I'll explain why somebody would be so dead set on killing this boss. Um, but okay, we're gonna... So this boss is weak to explosives. You don't even have to have the weakening curse. Even without the weakening curse, this boss just dies to explosives. Uh, but let's go ahead and kill him before I get electrocuted or something. Get that crap out of here. Alright, so we dropped the eye. We killed the boss. Boss dropped a full heal. And it dropped this right here. This is why people are interested in killing that boss. This is the sun seed. This is how you create the sun. This is how you create the dark sun. This is pretty much like the longest quest in the game. This is uh this is where it kind of begins, I guess. Is like the beginning of that quest. And so you need you would need to kill two of these bosses. So you would kill this one, and then you would go to a parallel world, and you would kill another one. And that way you'd have a sun seed to create the sun in heaven, sun seed to create the sun in hell, the dark sun, and if a third third one, if you wanted to create an extra sun to just collide into it, whatever. Whatever. Point is, for every sun you want to create, you need that. And uh, so what most people do though is they throw this this down. And then maybe during the fight, they accidentally shoot something that has like matter eater or whatever, and it eats it up like that. And so if we wanted to go fight another one of those uh, these bosses because we needed to, to grab another sun seed, we would have to go fight another find another eye. And there is no there is no more guaranteed spawns. Only the one on the surface. If you delete that one in your world, you have to go find it from a treasure chest. It's the only way. Uh, however, if you remember early in this run, we accidentally came across one just randomly. We opened a chest in like the, the very early game. So there is still one more uh, for for us in this run here. But anyways, let's... Uh, I think we've killed 11? Oh, got it, Viala. Thank you for giving me a heads up, Viala. I appreciate you looking out for me. Looking out for Solar. Uh, don't forget to, uh, oh, thank you, Red P-Dog. Red P-Dog pointed out something very important that I forgot. Uh, for those of you that like to travel to parallel worlds and everything, which we didn't do any parallel, parallel world traveling in this run, uh, but if you've watched, like, my Sun Quest, my Sun Quest, I went to tons of parallel worlds, uh, but the Leviathan portals do work in parallel worlds. All regular portals do not work in parallel worlds, but the Leviathan portals do work, which that's a big deal because... Leviathan portals are shortcuts, and when you're traveling through parallel worlds, you want to go as fast as possible. So the shortcuts actually work in parallel worlds, and that's uh, 
that's a big deal. Uh, okay. Uh, chat, feel free to let me know if I'm miscounting here, but... I killed... I'll go in the order. The first boss that I killed was the pyramid boss, which was the spider in the pyramid. Second boss was the bridge boss. Uh, we killed him with that plasma beam homing. Third boss was the uh, alchemist that we killed with the ping pong luminous drill. The fourth boss we killed was the dragon. We did it with the freeze tentacle, freeze melee, the old freeze melee smack. The fifth boss was the boss that you have to throw the eggs at to get them to spawn. That was the door boss. That was number five. We killed him with black holes. Uh, number six was the master of masters, and we killed him in a very cautious, just regular wand. Nothing too crazy. Uh, number seven... We killed Mecha Colmy with the, the same explosion wand that we're still using right now. Um, number eight was Tiny, same explosion wand that we're using right now. Uh, number nine was the friendly boss, those little green guys that were trying to spit on me. First, we killed all the babies in front of them. Then we killed the, the friendly boss with the same explosion wand. That boss really is just tanky. Uh, it's actually not even that tanky. It's kind of it's bugged out. It's supposed to be much tankier than it is, but it doesn't require anything special to kill them. Uh, number 10 was the Leviathan, and the only way we could kill him is if we had this weakening curse. Without it, I would have been at a loss. I don't know how we would have killed him. We would have been screwed. Uh, that, was, that was number 10, and the number 11 was the Forgotten Boss, which we brought out the eye so we could kill the Forgotten Boss. So now we're ready for number 12, the final boss, the boss of all bosses. Colmy himself. Head that way. Ow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you gotta be careful when dropping down too quick. You don't wanna go flying into that lava. I have done that before. You're curious why I don't shoot faster than this is because I'm I'm nervous of flinging myself into lava after this whole, you know this whole run. I don't want to throw the whole run away by being just silly and forgetting like oh yeah there's lava lava right there I almost forgot. Oh yep there it was. <laughs> Burn myself a bit. Just a little bit. That was that was with being cautious. Oh my god! I've, I I am mistiming these fucking walls big time. I keep thinking, ah, not yet. Then there's a wall of lava. And then I'm like, oh, it's right here. And it's like, not there. Uh, hold on, let me heal up real quick. <laughs> Stop, we already imagined. Wait, what? What? What are you trying to say? Uh, hold up. Damn it. Okay, full health. We good? Get more lava? Oh, it went too high. Oh, which by the way, if you're ever curious how these portals worked, each portal is powered by uh, teleportadium uh, under the portal. If you pour this teleportadium out of it, the portal disappears, like so. And uh, that's true for every portal, not just this final area portal. That's that's from the first portal you see to the last one. All of these portals that take you to the Holy Mountains, they're all powered by teleportadium underneath them. But uh, it is time. Oops. Time to slay us a boss. And uh, we only have three orbs, so this boss isn't going to be anything crazy. There's no big setup. There's no strategy to discuss. I mean, the Forgotten was just like, use explosives. This guy's like, just use anything. <laughs> just use damage. And there we go. That's it. That's 12 bosses down. The all boss run. And uh, actually, while we lock in this win, we're going to do what the chat always love to see. I'm sure they're spamming hell yeah right now. Uh, so it, it, this is kind of like a, a visual glitch. It's all gold, though it does look like Velveeta cheese or some, sh some shit. But uh, the whole world is gold. And we're heading to chat's favorite place in the whole world.
They're spamming right now in the chat. Please, please make my dreams come true and go to the dark sun. And for you, chat, I'll do it. I'll make your wildest dreams come true. We're heading to the dark sun where the professional professional Noita players go to die. See, Big Miv is down. Thank you, chat, for the claps and the, the GGs and the best is blessed. I appreciate you joining us on this journey today. Uh, for the guys on YouTube, if you watch this whole thing, I hope you're watching on speed times too, because I know a lot of times I was just ranting about nonsense. And also, sorry if some of the bosses, I really didn't go into too much detail on what they were all about, because, I mean, some of them are really simple. I mean, there's not, I mean, there's, you can talk different strategies, but for example, the forgotten, you bring out the eye, you can now see the boss, just shoot him with something explosive. I mean, yeah, you could use some kind of weakening curse for like, uh, you know, weakening curse for projectiles and hit him with projectiles to kill him that way. But really, at the end of the day, it's really simple. The boss is just insanely weak to explosives. You don't even need the explosive weakening curse on him. You just shoot an explosive at him, he just insta dies. Just use something that just goes boom. So those, those I usually didn't rant on too much. It's the earlier bosses that I ranted on a lot more, and that's because I feel like they're the ones that need that need more of a rant, uh, like of an explanation of what the hell's going on, you know? So we are just heading right over here to the dark sun and we will have completed our all boss run for the YouTube community. Uh, to all those on the YouTube channel that uh, requested it, I appreciate you guys posting the comments and all that. Sorry it took so long to get around to doing it. Um, I know th I don't know if people will like enjoy this run too much. It's not too wild. That's why I posted the Sun Quest first. I felt like it was more useful. It's got information that people are probably interested in. The all boss run is like you hit a certain point where you know I built like this uh, ex this weakening curse for explosives wand, and then it was just like I used that on every boss after that point, which was I think like four or five bosses at least, maybe six. Um, weakening curses are strong, so when you see those, besides the melee weakening curse, I really don't use that one. But uh, projectile weakening curse, explosive weakening curse, these things are in the electric weakening curse. These are these are very strong uh, modifiers. So once you build one of those, you're just like screw it, and you just go smash every boss with it. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into the dark sun. GG. A little bit of lag there for a moment. A little bit of lag. <laughs> uh, Eprevor, Eprevor, Eprevor. I'm butchering the name. It says random ranting is why I watch this stream. Poggies. <laughs> Thank you. I think extra life saved you. Yeah, but then the lag afterwards was kind of brutal. That extra life was like. Ugh. Nectar says I'm glad I woke up in the middle of the night to catch the end. I appreciate you being here, Nectar. Hopefully you're able to get some more rest, my friend. Let's see what win number we're at for the people on YouTube. Um. Which, by the way, let's see, win number one, oh, 1,413. I think I need to update my title a bit on on uh, Twitch. It's a little behind. But uh, the end game time was four hours. The IRL time was more like uh, closer to five hours. So, not a bad run. Not a bad run. GG.